Jordan Lynch has never lost in this stadium tonight. He'll walk in for the final time, and maybe he'll walk out with a win, and maybe even a plane ticket to New York City. snow on a Tuesday night never hurt anybody. Welcome to Maction ESPN College Football Primetime from Husky Stadium in the Calb. It's Western Michigan in from the zoo in 1 and 10 and Northern Illinois trying to complete an unbeaten regular season. They're already the Mac West champions. But there's a lot at stake every time the Huskies take the field now. They moved up in the BCS after their win last week over Toledo. They're now in a good spot in 14. Two ahead of Fresno State and UCF at number 19. They've got to go a long way if they're going to make it into the BCS even if they win the American. Welcome inside a snowy booth, literally. Along with Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. Quinn Kesnick is out there in the elements. He'll join us very shortly. We talk about BCS busters. This is the last year of the BCS. Well, the real BCS buster Ray out there tonight is Western Mission. And they could cause some real tumult in the BCS if they can pull off the upset. But Northern Illinois is a tough order to tackle. Yeah, and they are on unbelievable streaks right now, David. The winning streaks that, that they are on. You, you know, you see the numbers right there. 20 25 in a row here at home, 24 consecutive Mid-American Conference wins, and then they get it done on the road as well. It's a streaking football team. And there's one number behind all those numbers, six, Jordan Lynch. Yeah, he's an outstanding football player, and I use the word football player with great respect because he is one of those guys, that he's a quarterback that doesn't believe in sliding, he doesn't believe in running out of bounds, and not only that, he's got all the tools, throws the ball down the field extremely well, extremely accurate with his pass, he makes great decisions, and Man, can he run with the football? You see the numbers there. Just dominates and takes over games, late in games with those legs. He is a special player that is the leader and carries this football team to where they're at. Now, you stay out of the elements tonight. You deserve a free T-shirt or something for showing up. It is also senior night, an emotional evening for 17 Husky seniors led by Jordan Lynch. A quick hug for mom, but it's game time now. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by... K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. Swing Spear Sports. This is a hearty crowd of Husky fans here, but no one any hardier than our man on the sideline tonight, Quinn Kesnick. Quinn? Thanks, Dave. Jordan Lynch's impact is far greater than his gaudy stats. Three ways he sets the tone for this team. The first would be leadership. Whether you're dogging it in the weight room or dogging it in practice, he's going to get after you. He's going to challenge you, but he's also going to inspire you on game day. Second would be toughness. He's the most physical player. He loves contact. He doesn't shy and will never slide or step out of bounds. And the third would be clutch. You know, two weeks ago against Ball State, he delivered with the game on the line. He was They couldn't tackle him. Last Last week against Toledo, 99-yard drive when the game was in the balance. He has all the winning intangibles, Dave. Yeah, there's no question. I love watching him run because he is more than happy to offer up a piece of shoulder or something to a defensive back trying to get him down. They did not forecast snow this evening. It is not very much right now. We had a pretty good series of snow showers about an hour before kickoff, so you're going to see a light dusting on the field. And Ray will not have any kind of an effect on the players. It could make the ball a little slippery, but as far as warmth, they're going to be warm down there. And, and the footing, that you have to keep an eye on because there is a little bit on the surface. So I, I think that favors offense. They know where they're going. Defense is always reactive, and you have a more, more of a tendency to slip when you're reacting to somebody. So kicking to Darion Chance and Donald Seliscar. And this is Seliscar, and they win behind the kicker. No problem for that to be a touchback. You saw those 16 mile an hour wins, so that's certainly going to have an effect on the direction. Western Michigan ball first and 10 from their own 25. So Zach Terrell is the quarterback for this team as a redshirt freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He quarterbacks the Broncos, took over midway through the season due to an injury to Tyler Van Tubergen. And then when Van Tubergen began to get healthy and healthier and healthier, Terrell just flat won the job. Just getting better every game is what the coaching staff from Western Michigan told us. And so they said, you know what? We're going to keep riding him. That's your freshman. Let's, let's get him ready for the future. The tailback is Darion Chance, 22, a senior from South Florida. And he gets the first opportunity. 
Yeah, a couple of yards there. Michael Fethicat Arena in there on the stop. Now for Northern Illinois tonight, they are missing one of their best players, defensive tackle Ken Bishop, who beat up in that Toledo game, and he is out for the night. And that's going to hurt him up in the middle of that defense. Pass out, caught. And here's one of the top players in the MAC, Corey Davis, the remarkable freshman wide receiver from Wheaton, Illinois. And Ray will take us through our impact players on third down at about three. Well, Corey Davis, the ball carrier right there. Actually, I'm sorry, the receiver who is outstanding, Dave. He's as good as it gets. Just a true freshman, extremely outstanding football player right there. Brian Fields, he's a little guy who can squeeze through small holes and make plays. Jimmy Ward, probably the best defensive back in the Mid-American Conference. And then, of course, uh, Bass, the linebacker, Jamal Bass, he makes plays all over for this yeah, defense. There will not be a first down here. It doesn't look like it's going to be pretty close. A big hit by the appropriately named Boomer Mays, and it may be a first down. Might have been wrong on that. Let's see. Yes, it is. Barely made it, and a punishing hit. That's how you step up into the hole right there. And linebackers love this kind of weather, day, especially if they're mutters as I was, guys that maybe not quite as fast as everybody else, but they seem to be faster on this kind of surface. And I got Mr. Boomer Mays as one of those guys. He had 11 tackles in a win last week versus Toledo, a win that helped vault Northern Illinois in the number 14 spot of the BCS, up from 16. First down for the Broncos. And a delayed draw. That will pick up out to the 39-yard line. Pick up a four. Second down and six. And Donovan Gordon, he's getting the opportunity with Bishop out tonight. He makes the stop. Western Michigan does a nice job with their screen and draw game. And that's one thing that will keep a defense on its toes, kind of slow people down a little bit. And it also makes up for deficiencies you may have in your offensive line. Steps into the throw, and there is Davis. Looks like he's right at the marker for a first down. Well, we'll see. If not, he's not off by much. Zach Terrell, I think, throws on the run better than he does in the pocket. And you see he's got the good footwork there. He just throws a strike perfectly. Gets it out to Corey Davis on a little out route there, breaking away from where the coverage is. Gets enough for the first down. Still the Broncos, couple of first downs on the opening drive of the game in chilly conditions here in DeKalb, as you can see by the dusting of snow on the field. Short gain that time, second down and eight. Again, that's Darion Chance, both of the backs for the Broncos. Small, 5'5", five, five, Chance, 161. Mays in there on the stop. Brian Fields, who we'll also see tonight, only goes 5'8", and just a couple of bucks under two, a couple of pounds under 200. Chance, as you mentioned, five foot five. He's hard to pick up a lot of times in there. You see him, he'll, he doesn't need a big crack to get through. And all of a sudden, he's on you, and he's got the quickness and the explosiveness to make a big play. Scrimmage it'll be third down and eight. Anthony Wells got up to send that back. And here's PJ Fleck. He is an NIU alum, had a tremendous career here as a wide receiver in his first head coaching job, only 32 years old. He owns some records. He'll find his name in the record books here. And he, sorry, Dave, I was gonna say he is more enthusiastic and energetic than 10 men, according to Ed Pinkham, the defensive coordinator. And he is. If you get a chance to talk to him. You're going to come away uplifted and excited. It just rubs off on you. Terrell has a little bit of room to run, and he took it up the middle. And he'll be stopped short. It'll be fourth down and four at the Huskies' 49-yard line. Sean Falliard in there, a freshman from Crystal Lake, Illinois, on the stop. Western Michigan sends out the punt return team. That means Matt Williams will be handling punt returns. P.J. Fleck told us they were going to be aggressive and creative. To me, this is a great spot. Midfield, uh, early in the game, try a fake punt here. We'll see if uh, he, how aggressive and creative he will be. Yeah, for the second straight game, Tommy Lee Lewis will not play. That's going to be a hold of wide receiver. Line drive kick. Williams has some room to his left. To the 30. 
and hit at the 32 yard line. So decent field position. And when we come back, you'll get your first look of the night following that 13 yard punt return. The guy who could be a Heisman Trophy candidate, it is Jordan Lynch. The light bulbs in Both the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. So Western Michigan got a couple of first downs, but the drive stalled at the 49-yard line of the Huskies. So it'll be Northern Illinois' ball for the first time tonight. And here is Jordan Lynch. They rent your senior from the south side of Chicago. You see his numbers. The Huskies from their Sixth 31. in total yards in the FBS. 38 total touchdowns this year. That includes a pass receiving touchdown, by the way. And he loves to run the football, and here he goes. Lynch finding a hole, gets off to the left side, and gets about six to the 38-yard line before Trevante Bowles, a senior from Vero Beach, Florida, bringing him down. It'll be second and four. Yeah, I mentioned mutters earlier on, and I got a good sense that Jordan Lynch is one of those type of players where a little slippery out there. He, the way he uh, runs, I think it's going to benefit him. I can't wait to see him go tonight. We just saw a nice example of it there, picking up six on first down. Interesting formation. Now they send Cameron Stingley 42 out of there. Lynch rolls the other way. Fires on the run. Knocked away. In midfield. Good play defensively. Trying to get it to Joan Breskin, but Ronald Zamort knocking it aside. So it'll be third down and four. Zamort does a nice job. He's on the inside here. And watching break and then cut underneath. Get the head turned back. Get the right hand out in front of it. Knock it away. That's an excellent defense from Ronald Zamort. James Spencer now, the faster of the two running backs between Stingley and Spencer, and they're 34. Said Eeks the tight end in motion. And Lynch heads out that way, finds Spencer. Stepped out of bounds at the 42, but that appears to be enough for the first down. He did the three, three and a half, they got four, and that should do it. Yeah, the chains do move. Real quick decision there from Jordan Lynch. Gets the ball out of his hands, and now they're into that hurry up mode, lining up. Let's see if they want to put the. Uh, pedal to the metal here. Out of the empty backfield. Lynch, he'll keep it. Looking for the block from Meeks. He gets it, heads to the marker. And there's a rare example of him running out of bounds. Very, very close. Good block from his tight end. He played off of that. Eeks number 83. And that will be another Huskies first down. And that empty set the where they spread him out is really a 50-50 run pass set for the Huskies. And they like the numbers they have because most defenses will just have five in the box against that. And then you got five hats for the five hats and a heck of a runner in Jordan Lynch. Lynch firing down the sideline, overthrew, incomplete, trying to get it to Deron Brown, who set out the Toledo game. But that was a big win for Rod Carey and his NIU staff that bolted them up in the BCS standings and nailed down another trip to Detroit for the MAC championship. We had a nice time. The other day, actually yesterday, sitting down in the offices with Coach Carey, and boy, everybody's happy uh, around here. Imagine notice, that, you know? It was an unbelievably happy group of people in those offices, no question. Lynch, look at the nice footwork by Lynch, and he again heads OB. That was the right decision to make, being chased by Demetrius Petway. Gain of seven for Jordan Lynch. It'll be third down and three. And Jordan Lynch will, he's such a, a deft ball handler. He, the way he fakes, it looks the same every time, and he does such a great job of carrying out the fakes. It's tough. I've seen guys, when he has the ball, just run by him, chasing after the guy he, they thought he had handed it to. Three carries already for 24 yards here on the opening drive for Jordan Lynch. Fourth carry, and he is hit right at the first down marker. The tackle that time by Kyle Lark, getting an opportunity with Austin Lewis out for the Broncos. Lark, a redshirt senior from Alma, Michigan, met him right at the mark, but it's still going to be a first down. And Lark started the first seven games for the Broncos, and then was knocked out of the lineup, and now with the injuries, gets an opportunity to get back in there today. Western Michigan a bit thin defensively. And it's a defense that has been gashed a lot during the season. 105th in points allowed, 113th in rushing yards allowed, 234 on a year per game. Little jet sweep motion this time. That's Spencer, and he'll get inside the 15 for he's finally brought down by Mike Jones. That's going to be 26 yards and the first down in the red zone for the Huskies. And we spoke with Ed Pankham, the defensive coordinator for Western Michigan. He said, we got to set the edge. And what that means is you got to turn this guy inside. No edge was set there at all by the Bronco defense, and the speed beats him to the edge. Interesting formation here from the right hash. They go trips to the top of your screen. 
Lynch looks that way, shoulder shake, throws to the end zone, overthrown. The receiver looking for interference, but that was a Brown, and that pass was out of bounds, so it'll be second down, Pet Bay on coverage. Northern Illinois has a tendency to show that bubble screen to the outside, and they tried to get Western Michigan to bite on it. You see Jordan Lynch, he faked that thing, and then thought maybe he could sneak one past him over the top. It wasn't there, he threw it away. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Spencer, 34, back into the game at the tailback spot. Unbalanced line right now. That's Brown in motion, and Lynch will fake it to him and go toward the end zone and score another rushing touchdown. Flag is down. Back at the nine-yard line. There's a flag on the play. Well, that one looked just too easy. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's unusual for Northern Illinois. Only three penalties in their last three games. You talk about a formula for winning football, that's it. Well, here you are. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the line, but there's too many in the backfield, and it's unbalanced, but you got to line up right. Well, wait, did Quite he frankly, say five in the backfield? Yeah, I didn't see it, actually, Dave. The way I counted it. Uh, I counted four. I did two. So I don't know about that one. Well, second down at 15, erase the touchdown. There were definitely seven on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we could hear somebody call for a timeout. Of course, that's not reviewable. No. So Western Michigan, and there's P.J. Fleck right there, and he's not at all concerned about the temperatures, the wind chills, and the teens right here. Energetic, as he talked about, just 32 years old, the youngest head coach by a year, Matt Campbell up at Toledo, is the second youngest, 33. They share the same birth date, and that'll be coming up over this weekend, as a matter of fact. And interesting, there's been a lot of talk about uh, in the Kalamazoo papers and the people around the program saying that even with the 1 and 10, they've had some tough losses. They lost to an FCS school earlier this year, that the attitude around there has been upbeat. And that's, uh, I put that all on P.J. Fleck because he is enthusiastic, if nothing else. I mean, he, he you know, just talking with him, everything is positive. He actually told us that he is, feels like he is blessed with all the adversity that he's faced this year because when he does turn Turn it around, it's going to be that much sweeter. I love that kind of attitude. You're going to see number 36, Draco Smith. Draco Smith, the freshman from Hammond, Indiana, now in the tailback position. He checks out of the backfield. Second to 15, Lynch, bubble screen. Brown catches it. And his own man kind of got in the way. And when that happened, that ends up being a gain of nothing. It'll be third down and 15. Good play by the middle of the Broncos defense. Smith and Bowles in there. Well, Fleck has also tried to, and he's very famous for the row the boat, which he got a lot of attention for over the summer. And he talked about that philosophy, but I'm sure over time he's going to want to be known for more than just that. But for the moment, if that's the impression people get of the program, they'll take it. It means a lot to him personally. Lynch, middle of the field, open, incomplete, fourth and 15. Brown, and diving catch, just missed it. Well, it looked like Brown should have got that one. Here's Jordan Lynch throwing it right there into that hole, and just a little bit outside. And actually, I think Brown should have brought that route inside a little bit more. There was room inside there. The safety had stuck to the middle of the field. He could have flattened that out and, and gotten to the football. Had, had he run that route a little bit more meticulously. If you remember this last week in Toledo, the trials and tribulations of Matthew Smith, he missed three field goals, and it didn't please Rod Carey as head coach. This one's from 34. Well, he's uh, missed his last five. And six out of his last eight. So, Northern Illinois had the ball for a while, just about a dozen plays. They were really badly hurt by a penalty, and now a missed field goal. We're 0 0 between the Broncos and the Huskies. Tuesday night in Snowy DeKalb. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Audi, Truth and Engineering. And Wendy's. Yeah, I remember last year, or actually this year, the Discover Orange Bowl was a BCS stop for Northern Illinois, and at the moment they're number 14 in the BCS. But you have to wonder about their kicking game. We don't want to look like we're picking on Matthew Sims, but last week 
And the game was in doubt in the first half against Toledo. In fact, Toledo had the lead at halftime. Sims missed three field goals, one from 23 out. Two shots. Yeah, the, the others, that's close, but, you know, that doesn't matter. Yes, it was a cold night, but I'm sure it's difficult. He's not a problem with distance. And he got that reaction following the third one from his head coach, Rod Carey, who was none too pleased. Now, there's Matthew at the moment. When we asked Rod Carey specifically about him, he said, he's fine. He's a kicker. He's fine. Mm -hmm. And Terrell, you might have been able to see the effect of the wind on that pass. That was a long throw to Timmy Keith, who made the diving catch for a gain of about eight seconds or two coming up. But at this point, if I'm Matthew Sims or one of Matthew's teammates, uh, I'd, I'd be sitting with a guy to talk to him a little bit. That's, that makes me feel a little sad. It's tough to do. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm sure you know, they, they want him to perform. You know, and I mentioned it off air, Dave. They might retire him alongside Diesel because Ooh. he's in the doghouse right now. Yeah, Clint has more on that. We'll get to that after this play. And they are retiring their legendary mascot, Diesel, tonight. Opportunity here for a first down with the Broncos. And squirting through is Darion Chance for the first down. Quint? Yeah, Sims has missed uh, six of eight now. And you got to think that poor technique is now impacting his confidence. Finally, a team that comes over and sits next to the kicker. You know, kickers are kickers, and they're generally left on their own. Uh, no no coach or, or player had come over to Sims until just now, and, and they're cozying up and trying to stay warm uh, under the dugout. That's Tyler Riedel, uh, number 26, the punter, who is over there with Sims. Well, they speak kicker. They speak the same language. Pekingese. Yes, first and ten. Carroll in big trouble here. When he get outside of the pocket to throw it away, he did. Plus, he had some help there, too. So it'll be second down and ten coming up. And those four of those last misses, they have been wide right. So I, I think it's just the way he's lining up and the way he's approaching the football. He's, he's not getting through it all the way. And it's a simple adjustment because he's hitting it pretty good. But this is what we were referring to last week. Yeah, sometimes coaches just sort of ignore the kickers. But Rod Carey is active in special teams. And that's his baby special teams. He's in on every special teams meeting. There's a lot of head coaches do that. Well, everybody has their, their boiling point. There's that delayed draw again and again. Just squirting through. That is Brian Fields, redshirt senior from Newcastle, Delaware. With these small backs the Broncos have, it is sometimes tough to find them. Yeah, we were talking to Kurt Shiraka, the offensive coordinator. He said they, they often joke when they do get a big play from him. Wow, they just didn't see him. <laughs> and sometimes that's true. It's difficult to find a little guy when he's running amongst the tall trees in that offensive line. And then he's on you, and these guys have great quickness and explosiveness through fields and chance. Got a block he needed, Terrell, getting pressure from the back side is incomplete, and a flag is down. Often this is a neutral zone Mario fraction Rodriguez. on the defense from where that thing came. Try to get the ball into his tight end or his H-back, Mario Rodriguez. Offside, defense number 29, five-yard penalty, third down. That's the cornerback, Paris Logan. It remains third down, but now instead of third and six, it should be third and about a yard. Coach Carey looking on. Trying to figure out what's going on with his football team. A couple mistakes here early on in the missed field goal. Awesome points. They also had a penalty that we couldn't quite discover what it was. With they said there wasn't enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five in the backfield. We counted it up. Looked like four to us. Out of a power formation. Here come the Broncos and they're held back. They may have even lost a yard that time. The middle of the line coming through George Rainey. 46, Boomer Mays, the linebacker right there, 45 in there on the stop. It's fourth and even a two-year to go now. And Western Michigan will punt for the second time tonight into the wind. And Western Michigan brings in Trevante Bowles, number 55, defensive tackle, to play that fullback spot. But I've watched a lot of film on these guys, and I've seen them run that same play pretty much every time on a short yardage. Uh, Northern Illinois was dialed into that one. Matt Williams in single safety, a rugby punt on the way, a low screamer. 
And you got to be careful if that hits a Northern Illinois player, but it did not. And Western Michigan will get a roll right to the 20-yard line. It's a punt of 40 yards. It probably was no more than seven feet high. I want to know more about Jordan Lynch. We had an opportunity to talk to the young man yesterday. A Heisman candidate. Act. Smile strong. Yeah, there's a there's a right time and a right place to, you know, mess around, and um, I think people are sometimes on the field. You know, I bring that humor. You know, people are too uptight on the field, and you know, sometimes it costs us in some games. And um, you know, just bringing the humor, just messing around, just you know, you, you need to realize that you know, first reason you're playing this game is to have fun. And uh, I always bring that little kid mentality out there to the game because you know, when you watch the little kids, you know, just watching my brother play. You know, they're always having fun at practice, always laughing and stuff like that. And you know, that's something you don't ever want to lose. And he even uh, popped into the meetings yesterday to offer up a couple of lines uh, to pick on one of his coaches. Jordan Lynch, this time on the zone read, he hands off. And that'll be the big back Cameron Stingley for about three. Interesting possibility here, by the way. Should Stingley get 42 yards tonight, it'll be the first time in Huskies history they will have two 1,000-yard rushers in the same season. Of course, Jordan Lynch has cruised past the 1,000-yard mark already this year. And Stingley, you mentioned, he is a load, 240-plus pounds, former linebacker, tough man to bring down. And Lynch with that excellent ball fake that Ray talked about. Keeps it for the first down to the 32-yard line, a gain of 10. by Justin Curry. And a good example of how you run a zone replay. Well, here it is. He had to go down low to get the snap, but he always has his knees bent anyway, and then he finishes the run by lowering a shoulder into the defender. And this is Stingley running wide. Good job there by the Broncos defense to keep that to no gain. And that was Kyle Lark, the second leading tackler for the Broncos defense. You know, I, I want to take a look at, at uh, Jordan Lynch here. He takes the shotgun snap lower than any quarterback I think I've ever seen. We asked him about it. He said he's a shortstop back in his baseball days. And, and that's the body position that, you know, you get ready at. That's how you play football. And, and that's how you, you compete in athletics. Watch the knee bend that he'll get when this snap gets ready to come. Look how down low he gets. And he'll hang it about to it again, running through a few tackles as he always does. Pet by number two came in and hit him right around the neck. And it's going to be a gain of six for Lynch. So third down and five coming up. So Lynch unofficially now over 40 yards rushing. And I complimented Coach Terry on, on his team. Watch, watch the knee bend there. Now the snap is low. He had to go down a little bit to get it. But he does that before every snap. And I told Coach, you got a bunch of really good knee benders here, Coach. And, and he, he, he knew what I was talking about. This, this football team plays low. And they bend the knees and they get leverage. Lynch hit right after he throws but hits his man. And a first down. This is Turner. Argueros Turner into Broncos territory, gain of 23, and Lynch hung in there to the last second. Just to finish that story, he gave the credit to Brad Ork, the strength coach here, and as far as uh, the, the knee bending, he gave him the credit, and that was a nice little throw, got rid of the ball quickly, right on the money, so that his receiver could continue to run right after the catch. The NFL scouts keeping an eye on Jordan Lynch as well. There's at least one here tonight from the Bears. Not a very far trip, of course, from the city of Chicago. Lynch scrambling here. Initially, looked like he wanted to pass, but Lynch making something out of nothing and steps out of bounds on the 20-yard line. That'll be a 19-yard gain for the senior. Maybe the best attribute Lynch has in his running is the patience that he shows. And he will wait, and then he'll set people up and make a little dip and a move outside real quick. But if it's jammed up in there, you see a lot of guys, they'll just run into the back of their own guys and try to push a pile. Jordan Lynch has the patience. He'll wait for things to clear up a little bit and then accelerate and make something that wasn't there. Another low snap. Lynch handles that and again hangs on to it. Gets a good block downfield. And there you see him lowering his shoulder that time with the contact. Get to the 10. That's a gain of 11. Ishmael and Petway on the stop. Another first down in Lynch. I noticed particularly last week, Ray, in Toledo, he is the guy in the red zone. Yes, that, and he will take the ball more often in the red zone. And a lot of times it's a read option, and, and he'll, if there's any question in the read, he says, ah, all right, I'll handle that one, boys, and then they'll call him down here more. 
because he gets the, the yardage. To the end zone. Smith catch made for the touchdown. Jawan Prescott's in. There is a flag down. Nice little back throw to show for Joe. Throw Defense for Jordan number seven. Rich. Penalties decline. There's all the plays a touchdown. Six nothing. Huskies. Defender never got his eyes back around to find the football. Here you see him working one on one against Zamort. Zamort, you see, never quite got his eyes back. And if, if you don't do that, you're at a huge disadvantage. Because you can't, you can't knock the ball away that you can't see. And at that point, it's luck and it's trying to get your hands in between the receiver's hands. But advantage goes to offense. Matthew Sims, 54 55 PATs. And for the Huskies, an eight play, 80 yard drive in three minutes and 19 seconds. And again, you saw the ball handling wizardry of Jordan Lynch lead the Huskies to a TD. Northern Illinois tomorrow. You know, you knew somebody was going to do this tonight in 20 degree weather. I don't know if their moms and dads are watching, but and I, BCS on the back, they are committed to the, the bit to chance. say the least. <laughs> I don't know, Dave. It, maybe committed was the wrong. Yes. Or the right one. Committed to something anyway. <laughs> well, last week, Northern Illinois was shut out in the second quarter of the game against Toledo. That was just the second time they didn't score in a quarter this year. They have put up the points here in this first quarter, and the wind forcing the ball down. If it happens one more time, the Morgan Illinois will have to use a holder. We had, if you're wondering about that little dusting of snow, about two hours before kickoff, we had a pretty good snow shower come in. And we've had a couple of other littler snow showers. And the temperature was in the mid-30s during the day, and it dropped about 5 o'clock central time. Like a rock fast. Yeah, it did. Right about when that snow came in. Right about when the sun uh, disappeared. going to force good hands there by Sutterskar. And he finds a gap. Sutterskar to the 30. Good return here for the Broncos. Sutterskar knocked out of bounds outside the 35-yard line as we throw it to the studio. And Chris Cotter with Trevor Maddich. Dave, not such a great year for Cal football, but the basketball team's off to a great start. 5-0 on the year and leading Syracuse right now at the Maui Invitational semifinals. That game is over on ESPN, so check that out. About four and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Night game, Baylor and Dayton. Another good one coming up on ESPN. Dave? All right, thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. You get a good look at Zach Terrell, the redshirt freshman quarterback from Fort Wayne. Eight touchdowns, eight interceptions on the year. He was not the starter at the beginning of the year, but took over due to injury and has hung on to the job. And he's gotten better each week, and he's done a nice job of running the offense, starting to understand the things that he has to do with protection, and then he takes care of the football. And Western with a couple of very good running backs out to the 43-yard line. Tackle made by Jimmy Ward. First time we've called his name tonight. Darion Chance with the carry there. Jimmy Ward, 15 right there. As good a player other than maybe Khalil Mack in the Mack in defense. Down to the 45, the 46, and look at the big man rumble. That is Mario Rodriguez making people miss. There is a flag down at the 49-yard line of the Huskies. A little hurry up action from the Bronco offense and then ran a bootleg out of it. There you go. There you go. Holding offense number 46. 10 yard penalty. First down. That's Clark Musman. Now the first down uh, still for Western Michigan, but that was a big gain that was wiped out by the hold. And Rodriguez was. He was lumbering. He was big very, time. Very tough to bring down. And they list him at 6'3", 265. He, he looks like he's a tad bit bigger than that. So that was before breakfast. As if that's not big enough. But he's going to be brought down by just one man. You know, you know what? It's, it's funny. Sometimes the big guys are very graceful on their feet. And he showed some of that right there. So you heard the officials say first down, but it's actually second down and three.
whistles from the other side of the field, the far side of the field. And this might be a Huskies timeout. Or we might have an argument about the down. Well, we got rivalries coming up all the time in college football this weekend. We're going to see some great ones, including the Egg Bowl. And that's Thanksgiving night on ESPN. Bo Wallace and the Rebels rolled on the Starkville, looking to take the golden egg. Well, Dan Mullins' upset-minded Bulldogs need to win the game bowl eligibility. ESPN College Football primetime, served by Applebee's, part of the rivalry series, presented by GoPro. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Thursday at 7.30 on ESPN and live on the Watch ESPN app. Second nice down and three. Straighten out whatever it was. No timeout called by Northern Illinois, so it's still second and three. And that'll be a first down. Some decent success here, Ray, for Western Michigan running in the interior with chance there, tackled by Gordon. Yeah, they're getting some good push up front. John Hoffing the center there had a nice block that time. Uh, Greg Peterson, the right guard, and uh, the bell cow that the unit, the leader, the James Kristoff, number 79, that left guard. They're, they're pushing people out of the way a little bit right now, allowing just enough room for Chance or Fields to squirt through. That'll be the end of the first quarter. Western Michigan with the football and on the move, but Northern Illinois trying to maintain or maybe even improve that number 14 spot of the BCS, led, of course, by Jordan Lynch. He's also trying to cement the possibility of a trip to New York to be part of the Heisman Trophy ceremony. The Big Ten begins tomorrow at 7 Eastern on ESPN, presented by State Farm. Much applause to that marching band right there because they were performing in a snow shower before kickoff. Very impressive. And I got to say this, too, for the folks at DeKalb to come out and put the stadium about three quarters full on a night where it would be much easier to fire up the fireplace and uh, join us on television or watch ESPN app. Let's get down to somebody who's also shown his toughness tonight, Quint Kesnick. A relatively slow start for Northern Illinois. Not a surprise to head coach Rod Carey, who told us about the emotional challenge that this game represents. Remember, they're coming off two rivalry games, Ball State, Toledo. Uh, they had the BCS show on Sunday night where things now are starting to work in their direction. They're facing a 1-10 in 10 team. You got some key guys out of the lineup, and you're sitting on a MAC title game next week. So so that's the recipe for a team that's not emotionally ready to play. And Quint, uh, you know, Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator for Northern Illinois, told us the Toledo game was expensive. He's missing one of his best linemen, Ken Bishop, out today. And also Tommy Lee Lewis, and the wide receiver, not able to play either for the Huskies. It's Terrell and Libbing, and then throws to basically no one. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, you know, and I kind of expected that myself a little bit, Dave, a slow start. And also, I've seen Western Michigan be competitive the last several weeks in the ball games. They are an improved football team, even though with the 1-10 and record. And so I thought they would come out and give, give Northern Illinois a pretty good taste of it here early on. But I, I, I think the Huskies are a second-half team anyway. I look for them to maybe do their more, more damage, I should say, as this game wears out. They are a devastating second-half team. Explain that just a moment as Terrell rolling to his right in trouble hangs in there and throws low and incomplete third and ten coming up in the second half the Huskies have outscored opponents 234 to 92 and it, in the last two weeks we talked about Dave the game against Ball State that thing was tied up with about five minutes to go and then the Huskies went on a 21-0 run to pull away in that one and then the Toledo game was nip and tuck until and I guess midway through the third quarter and that's when Northern Illinois started to run away with that one. So again, a second half ball club, no doubt about it. And Jordan Lynch is the guy that leads the way on those second half charges. The start of the second quarter means Western Michigan will have the win at their backs. Pressure here, all out blitz by the Huskies. Off the back foot, the catch is made, is it inbounds? Yes! Wow, Timmy Keith with a fantastic catch. Credit the redshirt freshman Terrell for hanging in there, and it's a first down for WMU. It's a really nice throw by Terrell. The, the wind down there is tough to deal with, and it got under that one a little bit because it's at his back. And then Keith, yeah, that's what you call knowing where you're at and just getting your foot right inside that line. 
Watch that come down there, and he stays up on the tiptoe and got them both in, actually. You know, the officials staring that down all the way, so we may not even hear from our replay booth. And we don't. This is Fields on the handout. Bounces off of one, and is brought down just shy of the 30-yard line by Jimmy Ward. That's a gain of nine, so second of the yard coming up. And Western Michigan, uh, one of their problems is a lack of explosive plays. And uh, I, I have to call that last play pretty explosive, the pass on a third and ten outside to get the sticks from uh, Terrell to Tim McKee. And that's the kind of play they haven't been producing on offense. They've been able to move the ball incrementally, but nothing big. Nothing that, that you know, will sort of keep a drive alive or, or, you know, zing it down the field for a big play. Not much of that out of this offense. Well, they only average 17 and a half points. And we'll have a timeout taken here. Apparently going to be charged to the Broncos. We'll find second out. If, yeah, that is their Michigan. second one left. So we'll step aside along with P.J. Fleck and the Broncos who are hanging tough on a chilly night in DeKalb. Use Chase Freedom at Amazon.com and get five. That's what makes the Cuisinart Griddler so deluxe. Now the Buckeyes national title hunt continues Saturday as ABC and Brexton Miller leads number three Ohio State into the big house with the nation's best win streak and the Big Ten title game looming while Devin Gardner and the Wolverines look to make a statement with a win versus their arch rivals. College football presented by Kate Jewelers, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro. Ohio State, Michigan, Saturday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on ABC. There are some of the numbers behind there. The Wolverines have the edge, but not lately. Well, probably not this year, quite frankly. The Wolverine offense is... We're searching for answers right now. The handoff to Chance. And here's an example of how the small backs can have an advantage by taking just the smallest of gaps in the defense to make the move and get the first down. Mays on the stop. Chance can dance. I mean, he had the, the little side hop there. and Watch the move. Watch his feet right here. When he gets both feet on the ground, bam, pops back into that little area and it finds the seam. He can, he's got a knack for those little cracks that he can get through and get some yardage. Out of a solid uh, high school program in the Fort Lauderdale area, Cardinal Gibbons will be first down and 10. Terrell goes back the other way, has a man open. That looks like Musman, and Musman, big collision at the two. That's Paris Logan, the cornerback, who hit him. One of those chest bumps right there. And as Musman, he launched himself up into the air. Well, that kept Musman out of the end zone, but they're almost there now. There's massive substitutions going on. And this is a nice play call right here as Kurt Chiraca saw that the uh, Northern Illinois defense was overreacting on that rollout scheme that Western's brought out a couple of times. And he got his foot inside the, the pylon there, Dave, but not the ball. So I think they marked the ball properly. Just 14 touchdowns and 33 visits to the red zone. And the replay booth would like another look at this. Or is that a flight? No, it's a penalty marker down. Ball starts. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. First down. So they're going to hit the right tackle with that. Taylor Moten. And there's an example of what happens when you're having a 1 in 10 season. You, right. know, you got a little mo, you got it, you're going, and you get down to the two, and then you're back five, or down to the one, back to the six yard line now. Yeah, and, and you're right, Dave. That, those are the kind of things that, that you do when you're not being successful. Those are the things that are. Yeah, I guess they're not easy to clean up, but they're simple. They're simple little things that you can clean up, and that's what the challenge is for P.J. Fleck and his coaching staff. So first and goal back from the six. Play action fake. Going to go toward the end zone, try to get the big fella in. Did he make it? No. That was Musman again. He got him down to the two, originally the one originally. Now he got him back to the one, second and goal. And Durant with the man-to-man -man coverage here, and he shows up a little bit late, but he does get the big fella down before he can get it over the end line. There's the goal line. But Terrell fumbled the snap. Did he get it back? Yes, he did. Well, again, that's only two touchdowns in the last 11 red zone trips. Third down and yard, yard and a half. Boy, and that, that's just one of those things that, we, you know, we just made an example of it with the penalty prior to that. And, you know, the, the snap malfunction there. 
points, you know, and they haven't been putting the ball on the ground. You know, only two fumbles in the previous three, and they haven't lost any. So they are taking care of the football. But a play like that, I mean, that, that easily could have been a touchdown if you could just execute the most basic play in football or in anything in football, and that's getting a snap. And with 11 minutes and 12 seconds left in the first half, Western Michigan is out of timeouts. And they're the, letting play clock run down. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. They were down to inside five seconds. So for P.J. Fleck, this is a homecoming, and I don't think he's had a whole lot of time to sit around his hotel and think about the good old days at NIU, but they were good old days when P.J. Fleck played for Northern Illinois from between 1999 and 2003. You see where he is, number three all time, and the 2003 team highly regarded around these parts for what they were able to do in defeating some of the best programs in the country en route to a 10-win season. And then he came back, yeah, actually, here's, here's the team photo that you just mentioned about that 2003 football team and there's P.J. Fleck and then also on his staff a teammate Vincent Reynolds defensive line coach so those guys were together back in the day under Joe Novak and then P.J. actually came back here and was a wide receiver coach and then also was named the offensive coordinator here for about 30 hours <laughs> and he he had an opportunity to go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and he decided to take that and that ruffled some feathers around here a little bit. And now a timeout called by Northern Illinois. Yes, it did ruffle some feathers around here. P.J. Fleck had an opportunity to work for one of his mentors, Greg Schiano at Tampa Bay, as a wide receivers coach, and took that opportunity, which I'm sure a lot of other people would have done. And uh, the initial reaction around Northern Illinois, they didn't particularly care for it. And no. I understand that, too. But uh, hopefully both parties have moved on. Right, and I, I got to tell you, I, I, I would have thought that Northern Illinois would, would have, uh, you know, congratulated Coach Fleck on that appointment and wished him the best and taken the high road. And, and not, not everybody did around here, and that, that's disappointing. I don't think that that's how you treat your own, and I also think that uh, you have to understand the opportunity that was available there. And uh, just some people uh, took it personally, I guess. Well, the jumbo package for the Broncos is in. Trevante Bowles, 55. We'll see if they hand him the ball this time. They do have it in the repertoire. They follow him, and they follow him into the end zone. That looks like a touchdown to me, and it is. And I like the changeup, because as I mentioned earlier, every time I've seen a short yardage goal line run from Western Michigan the last couple of weeks, it's been to the left side, and they want to run over there because they think Kristoff and Beavers, the left Offensive linemen are, are their, their best. They're the tough ones over there. And so they threw a little curveball in it, mixed it up, came to the right side this time. Nice little lead block there by the blue, big fullback Bowles. And into the end zone goes Chance. We're an extra point away from tying this thing up. Andrew Holloman hasn't missed a PAT yet this year. This league, by the way, has some outstanding kickers in it. And we are knotted up at 11 on 9 to go. So behind that jumbo package, 295 pounds of blockers pushes the 161 pound running back into the end zone. We're knotted up in DeKalb. Meet the lumberjack whose flannel was out of whack. That should do it. A laptop when you need it, a tablet when you want it. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event. Visit VWDealer.com and the new Intel-powered two-in-ones. Intel, look inside. 
Seven all here with 11.09 to go in the first half. And Western Michigan got a little creative on that touchdown play as uh, they unbalanced. I mean, they tilted the field big time. Here's the ball. You got one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, all on that side. And I think that's where they're going to run the ball. Sure enough, they're able to push people out of the way. Nice little block there by the offensive line, getting that push, and then the big fullback, the defensive tackle, brought over from the other side of the ball. And Mr. Bowles, he kind of gets a little piece of somebody, a linebacker coming through, and there you go. There's a little creativity and aggression that P.J. Fleck had talked about. He's Ray Bentley. I'm Dave Lamont. Quinn Kesnick is on the field, and uh, our ESPN crew, we want to particularly thank the, the folks who had to work in the snow yesterday to help set things up. Uh, it can be difficult. Uh, we're watching folks laying cables out there in the middle of a snowstorm, and we certainly appreciate uh, the effort and the time that goes into getting us all ready to do these shows. And again, the wind affecting, in fact, the last kickoff by Northern Illinois, it appeared that uh, Matthew Sims kicked the ball as it was going off the tee, which is one of the reasons that it ended up being a rather short kick. Right, because the wind is at the back of the kicker here in this situation. There should be no problem in bombing this one into the end zone. Although I imagine if that ball's a little cold, your foot might be cold. It could be a factor. Aguero's Turner and Paris Logan back deep again, and now we're going to have to get somebody to hold the ball. Tommy D. Lewis not playing tonight for Northern Illinois, second game in a row. They are pretty confident he'll be back for the MAC championship game at Ford Field against either Buffalo or Bowling Green out of the East. And they'll be playing, how perfect is this, this weekend, Saturday, at Ralph Wilson Stadium. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, Friday, excuse me, you're on 5 uh, 1 30. And that game, game will be on ESPNU. So Ronald Zamort will hold now for Western Michigan. And that's a pretty good kick, especially when that wind gets a hold of it. And not surprising. I mean, we really haven't seen people have a hard time with balance here. Paris Logan slipping in the end zone for the touchback. Well, Jordan Lynch is a Heisman candidate. We're finding that out with every weekend. So dual threat quarterbacks like Tim Tebow are a comparison to Jordan Lynch. Cam Newton. Yep, you got a whole litany of them that have been outstanding. You go Robert Griffin the third, and you know these guys are all run past threats. Johnny Manziel, another one who's a Heisman Trophy winner, and you know, he's having an outstanding year as well. And then here's Jordan Lynch and his numbers and how they stack up, and they stack up really good against those guys. Um, whether or not that means he's a, a contender for the Heisman, I think not, but I do believe he will be uh, invited to New York and he'll, he'll make it for the show. And so on the jet sweep, Northern Illinois gets knocked out of bounds at around the 30 yard line. That is Breskusen, Breskusen, pardon me. And I make that Turner, Argaros Turner, in there on the carry as they try to replace Tommy Lee Lewis. And for more on Heismanology. Quinn Kethnick's been keeping an eye on this all day. Yeah, Dave, I spoke to Joe Tessitore, uh, our own Heismanologist. I uh, said James Winston still entrenched at number one, although some of his votes are disappearing as Lynch breaks one on the left side. And a first down for Northern Illinois. Andre Williams of Boston College, a huge move last week into the number two spot. A.J. McCarron, Alabama at number three. He's got some big games coming up. And then Jordan Lynch at number four. But Joe said the way the votes have, are laid out right now, that it's likely that four guys would get invited to New York. Well, Lynch called it yesterday when we talked to him. A dream come true. Here he goes. And this is classic Jordan Lynch. It's just a little bit of a crisis here in this game. And he's taken over. Justin Curry on the stop, a gain of 17 for Lynch. And he does it every time. Every time it's a critical situation for this Husky football team. Jordan Lynch says, stand back. I'm going to take care of business. And away he goes. 110 yards and 10 carries for Lynch. So he's over 1,500 rushing yards on the year. And he takes a little bit of a break and gives it to the big guy, Cameron Stingley. And Stingley rumbles for about five. It'll be second and five coming up. Ishmael on the stop for the Broncos. Mm -hmm. 
Lynch fires it toward the sideline, in and out of the hands of the receiver. Would have been difficult for that to stay in bounds. It was a good effort by Deron Brown. So third down and six. Yeah, and in this type of weather, that, that ball had some heat on it. Yeah, that, it, it might have scorched the hands of Deron Brown as it went through. Hard, hard to catch a ball coming that hot, but that's the throw that he needed to make. I thought it was a great throw. Quite frankly, you know, tough one to hang on to for Brown. Again, throwing that into a very stiff breeze. Lynch always a threat in these situations to run, and he gets away. Lynch in the clear to the 15, down to the 10, carrying the defender into the end zone. Touchdown, Huskies and Jordan Lynch. Well, he took it over. And we talked about it. There he goes. You know, this one's a great scramble here. He wants to throw it down to his left. He's got a post route. It's not there. So right away, he says, okay, let, let's see if I can make something happen. And then there, there's no reason why Zamar, or excuse me, Zamort doesn't make this tackle. He had the angle on Jordan Lynch. But Jordan Lynch wheeled himself into the end zone. I mean, he, was going, he saw it, and he was going to get it, and there wasn't nobody going to stop him. You know, for some reason, you haven't had a chance to see Jordan Lynch play, and that was your first exposure. You got a good idea of what he has done for this Huskies program in his career. He replaced a very good quarterback in Chandler Harnish. Let's not forget about that. 63 of those yards on that drive were responsible for one person. Jordan Lynch, 11 carries, 137 yards, and the go-ahead touchdown for the Huskies. College football on Jordan Lynch leads them down the field to stop me if you've heard that before. 14-7, Northern Illinois in front of Western Michigan. You see what Jordan Lynch has done. These are the best in FBS for career. So he'll have a shot, and a very good shot, at 4,000 rushing yards, which is staggering. And 21, including the night, 100-yard rush games. You see the NCAA records. 316 a game this year by a quarterback. 18-15 last year. And he may be able to beat that this year with a MAC championship yet to come. And a bowl game. And those those yeah. statistics count as well. So. You see what he did last year. No one's ever done that. I mean, these are historic runs that Jordan Lynch is on. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Chance from Celestar. There's Chance right there back deep for the Broncos. They've got to kind of reignite the fire after they came down with a nice drive. Punched in from the one-yard line. And Jordan Lynch punched them right back. Very short kick. Or maybe a deliberately and it's knocked out of bounds, but that's not going to hurt Western Michigan. The ball was touched and will be out of the 22-yard line. Kyle Lark, the linebacker, trying to make the catch, but that couldn't have been easy. Well, let's take a look at Lynch tonight. 11 carries, 137 yards, and a touchdown. And when you break it down for him, he's got nine designed runs for 89 yards, two scrambles for 48, and a touchdown. And just the things, the little things he does, a little shoulder shake there to break it out. And then watch this stiff arm at the end of this one. I mean, that's just telling the kid to get out of your way. That just ain't right. And that's what he does. Incredible strength and patience when he runs the football. And, and then the indomitable will that he has. Terrell, plenty of time. Receiver open. And we haven't called Corey Davis' name that much tonight, except early on. That's incomplete, second down and ten. You may have been able to hear the wind through our uh, on-field microphones. It has been very breezy all night here in DeKalb. Yeah, I'm a little surprised they haven't tried to get the ball to Corey Davis a little bit more because he's their big guy, their, their big playmaker. He's the one who makes the plays down the field. Coming into the game with 64 catches, and that, that's uh, substantially more than anyone else on this team. And I think second behind him is 20 coming into the game. Well, Timmy Keith has made a couple of nice catches for the Broncos. Little play action. Terrell just facing the pressure and threw it over the head of the official. It'll be third down. Mario Jones broke loose. That was right in Terrell's face. And I think Jordan Lynch lit the fuse for this Husky football team because all of a sudden this defense has a little jump in their step now, too. Well, this is a tough spot for the Broncos. Third down and ten. They're not a particularly explosive team, as Ray has mentioned. And they've got to manufacture something. You've got to think that 84, Corey Davis, is the target here. 
Carroll, 7 of 13, 74 yards for the Redshirt freshman. There's Davis. And he's on the near side of the field. It'll be at the bottom of your screen. There he is. Now here, and he's that first option usually in situations like this. Carroll looking that way. Goes to a different receiver and it's knocked away. Would have been short of the first down. It was at 30 yard line. There's Jimmy Ward, who was a Sports Center top 10 play last week in the interception he pulled off over Toledo. It'll be fourth down and 10. Tried to fit it in the Timmy Keith. Yeah, and it's hard to compare Jordan Lynch to anyone else, but if you're going to say that Jordan Lynch of the defense here for the Huskies, is anyone? It's Jimmy Ward. He's the inspirational guy, the leader on that side, and also the performer. He's outstanding. Jay Schroeder, the sophomore from Columbus, Ohio, into punt again. Bit of a floater of a snap. You better get rid of it. There will not be a penalty for contacting the punter, and this gets away from Matt Williams, and Schroeder ends up with a great kick, and Williams ends up knocked down at the 23-yard line. And once that punter takes off running like that, then he's fair game. And so you're right, no penalty for that, and get after him. If you can get him before he gets the, kick the kickoff, more power to you. You see at Western, they, they run a, a fake fake on that side. And they, they got it overloaded over there, and then somebody dropped back. They're acting like they're going to get the ball. And, and uh, Northern Illinois, great discipline, Dave. They didn't bite on that at all. Perez Ford was the player chasing after the punter, Schroeder. And Schroeder was definitely motivated to get out of there. And did a nice job. Good pocket for Lynch. He'll dump it off. This is Stingley. And a good tackle. Stingley gets two. Second down and eight. And that was Trevor Ishmael, the junior from Miami, North Miami Beach High. And they're on the stop. Let's see if this offense gets cranked up again because after that last drive, definitely the intensity level rose there for the Husky defense, for the crowd, for the guys on the sideline. You could just kind of feel it. It's palpable in here. He got things going. Out of the right side, gets the first down, cuts back at the 40, and Lynch carrying a defender into Broncos territory. First down, a 27 yard run. That's that empty formation again, where it's a run formation for Northern Illinois because of the numbers that they have. And you're going to see the blocking that gets done. Nice pull there by Jared Volk, the big tackle. You get a lead block coming up inside, and then another block down the field by Deron Brown. And everyone's playing at a higher level now. And Lynch is over 4,000 yards for his career, and Stingley spinning off one hit gets seven, second down and three. Well, this is a small room that Jordan Lynch has just entered, and we'll show you in a moment what we mean. to Stingley. He'll break through one tackle and then drag down by two. Trevante Bowles helped bring him down. Well, this is a small room of people that have gone 5,000 pass, 4,000 rush. Colin Kaepernick, Brad Smith, Denard Robinson, and Pat White. And now, Jordan Lynch. And all those guys uh, to the left of Lynch have played in the NFL. And uh, are currently playing in the NFL. And I believe Lynch has a chance. Now, Kaepernick is the only one who really has a lot of experience playing quarterback in the NFL. And I, I think Lynch will get an opportunity to do so, and I think he deserves it. Lynch, he's going to add lib here, and he's got a lot of room. He gets a good block, headed for that same end zone, gets a great block downfield, and Lynch does it again. Oh, my God. He's done it again. You know, he could get 200 yards by halftime at this rate. And again, here's just a scramble. There's nothing, nowhere to go with it, so he tucks it down. Now he's just got unbelievable feel for where he needs to go and get to, and then the guys pick up the blocks down the field, as you called, Dave, and he, he had the determination. I think he knew touchdown when he hit about 25, 20 yard line there. He saw it happening, and he knew he could get to that edge and get around there and get himself another quick six. He has 200 yards, 13 carries for two bills for Jordan Lynch. Well, you brought up a good point. This is the second week in a row I've watched Northern Illinois. That kick sails wide right. A little trouble with the snap that time with the punter, Tyler Weedle, but the blocking downfield is something to watch because once it's obvious that he's on his way, Jordan Lynch gets some help from his receivers. They know what to do when number six takes off. Well, uh, they do know, Dave, that they, they got a chance to score anytime he does take off. And here you go. They just did.
dude, I'm like twice as big. Does this have to do with cheese at Big Crack? We win against Johnny Manziel, the number 21 Aggies. And at 8 o'clock at ABC, Crosstown Rivals battle for the victory bell. It's Brett Hundley, the number 22 Bruins battle. Marquise Lee, the 23rd ranked Trojans, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro. The fun Saturday night begins with AM and in Missouri at 7.45 on ESPN. Then UCLA, USC at 8 on ABC. Lynch for Heisman. Uh, talked to had some experts on that, including Desmond Howard last week, who owns one of those in the garage, who says, well, he might get the trip, but he doesn't see him winning the Heisman. What do you see? I don't see him winning the Heisman myself. I would love to see him go to New York, and I think he has uh, earned that right with the, the numbers that he's put up and the wins, all those things, and the type of kid he is. I would love to see him make that trip. Again, a very short, very high, and very out-of-bounds kick. That'll be a penalty and some decent field position for the Broncos. Well, the guy who's really charging up from the outside is Andre Williams at Boston College. And here's another name that I'm going to throw out there that we haven't mentioned yet. Fresno State's David Carr. Yeah. I, I, my personal opinion, I, I think Johnny Manziel is the best football player. In the Kicking country. team, five-yard penalty from the point of all and out of bounds. First down, Western Michigan. I, I don't know if he'll even make it there this year. But to me, he's, a, he's the funnest to watch. He's the most exciting. He's the most dangerous and dynamic. Uh, other guys are having better seasons. You know, a and with three losses now. It kind of puts the damper on that. But uh, I don't have a vote. I do not either. Not way, it's Derek Carr, not David. That's my bad. But uh, Derek Carr's done magnificent things for Fresno State. And by the way, they're rooting hard for Western Michigan tonight to come from behind. Terrell in some trouble. He's got some room and Terrell makes a nice move and then he is hauled down by Cody Hazlett. But that should be a first down for the Broncos. Well, there'll be a lot of Heisman conversation over the weekend. The Iron Bowl is going to be the big chance for A.J. McCarron. He has a huge game against Auburn. He'll certainly be at least going to New York. Back to the ground, back to Chance, bouncing off his own man. Short game there. It'll be second down and long. Well, we did ask Jordan Lynch. What would it mean to him to get the opportunity to go to New York and be part of that Heisman Trophy Every presentation? Every dream come true. Um, you know, growing up. Watching college football, it's a you know that's the biggest award you always think of. You know, winning the Heisman, and you know just to get an invite would be a dream come true. Um, you know, I know that's not never going to happen if I don't, you know, keep my you know level headed and just keep winning games. So far, he's done that. Yeah, won quite a few, as a matter of fact. Eleven straight this year. He has a touchdown pass, two touchdown runs tonight. Back to the ground, another short gain that time for Chance. It'll be third down and seven for the Broncos, just shy of midfield. Mario Jones in there on the stop. In fact, Jordan Lynch has only lost two college football games that he started. Uh, the first one, and then, and then last year, the bowl game, the Orange Bowl. Other than that, he's won every single one of them. Hasn't lost in the MAC. This team doesn't lose in the MAC. They've got to go back to October 1st of 2011 when the Chippewas beat them for the last time the Northern Illinois lost in this conference. This senior class has never lost in this stadium. They're 22 and 0. Ron did a good job picking up the stunt. Terrell's got to get out of there now, though. And throws and has his man. That's Davis. That'll be a first down for the Broncos. He had pressure again from Perez Ford, who broke through, but Terrell. Kept his uh, poise that time and got a nice pass off to Davis for the first down. And that's when Zach Terrell's at his best, when he's on the move, and whether it's going to his left or to his right. He's equally adept at going either way and, and throwing accurate passes. I think he's much better on the run than he is stationary in the pocket. receiver formation they hand to Brian Fields and he works hard to get a couple of yards maybe three it'll be second down and seven under five minutes to go in our first half Sean Durant came up and made that tackle safety getting closer to the line of scrimmage and he played the run there all the way on that play quick pace for the Broncos Terrell 
Long throw, incomplete. It'll be third down and seven. Trying to get that to Keith. Yeah, if I'm B.J. Fleck and company, uh, Kirk Shiraka, the offensive quarter, I'm going to roll Terrell out. I'm going to get him moving to throw the football because I think he's much better when he's on the run. And he's shown us that tonight. He's, he showed me that on, on film. Get that kid moving a little bit. Western Michigan on the season, 30% third down conversions. Tonight, however, they've been a very healthy 4 of 7. Screen pass. Knocked away. Intercepted, maybe. Let's see. This is going to be an interesting call because it looked to me that Willie Beavers, number 70, wound up with the ball for Western Michigan. Yeah, I think he just stole it at the end. Because initially, a Husky had a hold of that football. Well, there was a big discussion going on here. Ford and Beavers were wrestling for the ball. And that's what they're talking about right now as far as who had possession before the, that thing went down. Take a look at it right here. They're trying to set up a screen pass. Gets batted up in the air. And right there, you see Ford has it. And then Beavers ends up with it. I think that's Beavers football. I think you're absolutely right. It was Boomer Mays who deflected it. The question is, did Ford have possession? Because if he did, then the Western will have a first down at that spot where, the, where Beavers came up with it. Defensive team tipped the ball. Offensive line for Western Michigan legally caught it. Fourth down. So they're saying that Ford never had control. That's the referee, Greg Blum, by the way. And a fairly light night for penalties. I think they got this right. Yeah, take another look at it right there, and you see that he uh, never did have possession. Now, that's a good call by the officials as uh, Ford. That ball actually was up around his helmet, up around his head, and Beavers came up with it. And that'll bring out the punt team for the Broncos. And here's another great position to fake a punt. Well, we'll see what Jay Schroeder does here. He's had some adventures while on the run, but he's... Had some good kicks. Matt Williams back deep. Yeah, I want to amend that. With 18 yards to go, you probably don't want to fake it. <laughs> well, you want them to be aggressive, don't you? Not nah, that aggressive. Williams waving for the fair catch. He goes over his head and takes a Broncos bounce. But here's the thing. Jordan Lynch has proven that he can go with 94, 99 yards. Does seem to matter when he gets the opportunity. And Jordan Lynch will take the snap from the end zone on the jet sweep on the first play of a new drive for Northern Illinois. They get it outside the five to the seven yard line. Brown on the carry on that jet sweep, so it'll be second down and about eight. Wind chill down to nine degrees here in the Cal. I'm feeling eight, every one of them, all nine of them I'm feeling right now. <laughs> and they tell us the temperature is 23, but we're not buying that. And Lynch on its own read runs right into a Broncos defender. Very short game that time. That was Jarrell McKinney, sophomore defensive end from Detroit. So third down. Yeah, it looks like it'll be about six or seven. I'm going to say seven. Lynch already over 200 yards rushing in this half. Yeah, he's put on an amazing performance. The, the two scrambles for touchdowns, Dave, were just classic Jordan Lynch. And while those numbers are difficult to read, that appears to be a 79, Matt Krempel, the redshirt senior from Columbus, Indiana, who's getting some extra attention from the trainers. Fifth-year senior, right tackle. And this offensive line, you have to give them a lot of credit, too, Dave. They, they I think, uh, fly under the radar quite a bit and don't get the credit they deserve. And I mentioned it earlier, as a unit, they are much, uh, the sum is greater than the parts. They don't have necessarily a... A guy that stands out and is the so-called bell cow, but together, the way they work, they are outstanding. And they have great communication that they have amongst them, and the leader in that regard is Jared Volk, the senior, fifth-year senior left guard, number 77. You'll see him when they make the play calls up there. When Jordan Lynch gets the uh, the play from the sideline, he basically tells Volk first, along with the center. Uh, you know, Andrew Ness is right there as well, and then Volk. He'll spread the word, and then the word goes down the line, and they get it together, and Volk is always in the proper position. Well, Josh Ruka, number 70, gets a chance to play now in the tackle spot. Hopefully, Greppel will be okay and be able to get back into the game. 
four out of five on third down conversions of Husky so far. And this is why Lynch trying to get to the edge. Can he get there to the marker? They're waiting for me. Took a hit that time, but he gets right up. Point of pride with him. As a matter of fact, it's the defender, Donald Seliscar, who felt that hit more than Lynch did. Yeah, Seliscar came up and sold out. I mean, that's how you come up as a corner, and you're going to take on a big hit right there. <laughs> oh, and he hit Lynch right in kind of the hip area with that shoulder. A glancing blow. And, uh, it's <laughs> not, not to him it was. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, hopefully he's okay. He, uh, You're right. He sold out. That's what I was exactly what I was going to say. And people who criticize cornerbacks for not hitting people. Uh, there's an example of a cornerback doing everything he could to keep Jordan Lynch from getting that first down. Take another look at this hit. Here, here it comes. He sold it out. You're right. I, I prefer to see a guy wrap up in that situation, but there's no doubt he brought everything he had. And it was enough to stop Lynch short of the yard to make. And the first time Tyler Weedle has been on the field as a punter. He's been holding for field goals and extra points. And he's punting into a win. And Marcos ought to be able, Darion Chance back to receive, to be able to get pretty good field position here. It's a really short kick, and Western Michigan has to get out of the way. That doesn't even get to the 30-yard line. That punt only 14 yards. We go to where the studio is not 9 degrees. Chris Cotter and Trevor Maddich standing by. Gentlemen. Yeah, Dave, don't tell Quinn. It's very comfortable, about 72 degrees right now in the studio. Coming up at the half, Trevor Maddich will break down a very important Iron Bowl this weekend. And the Iron Bowl isn't the only rivalry game. A bunch of Ohio State, Michigan, USC, UCLA will break them all down. Plus, Kobe Speaks tells us when we should expect to see him back on the court. That's coming up at the half. Dave? A lot to look forward to. Thank you much. Great field position here for the Broncos. That defensive stand may end up yielding some points. Broncos out of timeouts. They go to the ground. This is Fields. And the interior of the NIU defense led by the linebacker, Michael Santa Catarina, in there on the stop. Second round and eight coming up. And this is a critical drive if, if Western Michigan wants to get back into this thing and, and uh, make it a, a ball game, even though they're down to only 13 here. Points on this drive would be critical. This is an interesting little formation that popped up there. Bust out to empty. Darrell looking in the middle of the field. Down there has a man incomplete. In and out of the hands of Clark Musman. He's claiming he was held. The officials aren't buying it. It'll be third and long. And that was a nice throw by Terrell. He got it over top the underneath coverage, and Musman, one way or another, has to come down with that one because that, that's an opportunity right there. And I like the, the scheme, the busting out into the, the, the empty set, and then Terrell did a nice job of selling it to the right to that overloaded side, the trip side, and then coming back to that seam out to the tight end. Pressure. Blocked, dropped. Big hit by Jimmy Ward right after the ball went in and out of the hands of the receiver, Darion Chance. It'll be fourth down and eight. Now, you do have a very good kicker at Western Michigan and Andrew Holdeman. And you've got the win at his back, so. But Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward. I mean, this ball's dropped. I think it was tipped, but Ward finished that one off. And that's the kind of thing that'll get people excited as well. It gets me excited. <laughs> This will be a 42-yard field goal attempt for Andrew Haldeman, who on the year, 16 of 18. 16 of 19. You're the man for that, dude. You know, I'm beginning to think it's me. So Rod Carey is happy about a kicker missing a field goal, <laughs> finally. And with a buck 42 to go and two timeouts, now we'll see what the counterpunch is for the Huskies. Yeah, laces were spun nicely. He just... Uh, Kind of pulled that one a little bit. A lot of times it's the angle of approach for the kicker. It will dictate whether they make it or not. You know, he kind of overstrode on that one. Well, Quint, you and I, in the last couple of weeks, we have not seen some of the uh, better kicking exhibitions that are out there. Uh, the, the cold conditions, you know, these guys trying to stay loose on the sideline, the snappers and holders, same deal. And the ball is like a rock. I mean, it, it is cold enough out here that that ball just has, just doesn't bounce very well. And, and, and 
you know, they shoveled the shield at 9 a.m. this morning, so you got the plant foot issue as well, and a little slip. There's a lot of different factors. We've seen poor kicking this uh, tonight. Yeah, you're right about the rock part, uh, Quint. You know, the compression of the football is diminished in this kind of conditions. Well, Lynch forced to throw it away, so it'll be third down of the couple. Intended for Deron Brown. And again, Western Michigan with an opportunity here, Ray. If they can hold, well, you get another 14 yard punt and they'll be in good shape. Of course, Northern Illinois can bleed the clock as well um, and use a timeout just to kill some time. Right, Western without a, uh, a timeout left here in this situation. And those gusts, and I'm far from a meteorologist, but they got to be in the 20s, maybe higher. Stingley in there, the backfield, number 42 behind Lynch. And Lynch will keep it. There you see the example of his ball handling deafness. And he will be ridden out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Another NIU first down right up front of P.J. Fleck. who gives him a pat on the shoulders. Curry and Zamort on the stop again at 15. Well, P.J. Fleck was the recruiting coordinator here at Northern Illinois when they recruited Jordan Lynch. And he spoke very, very highly of him. He, in fact, a lot of these guys in the upperclassmen were recruited when P.J. Fleck was here. I love the power and the understanding of the situation there for Lynch. He knew you had to get out of bounds, stop the clock. He so took a couple of people. Yeah, yeah. You guys with him, huh? Taking a deep shot into the wind, and it's overthrown. And Deron Brown's the intended receiver. It'll be second down at 10 with 63 seconds left in the half. Salaskar in coverage that time. You know, primarily the quarterback position is about decision making. And that's where I believe Jordan Lynch has a great opportunity to play at the next level. Now, I think he has the tools, the strength of arm to do it. Obviously, he has the running ability, uh, but I think he can make all the throws. But the decision-making is what sets guys apart. And he's an ace at that. Lynch under pressure. Fires too high. Third and ten coming up. Intended receiver that time, Breskison. And that wind is just gusting hard, Dave. I mean, the flags are all blowing that, that way. Uh, uh, he, I think he tried to play the wind a little bit with that throw, and that's why he overthrew it. So this may be another third down Jordan Lynch run, whether designed or a scramble. Third down and ten for the Punt too. No, I'm sorry, third down. Lynch over the middle. <laughs> Breskison saw the safety come over and thought the better of it. So it'll be fourth down, and Lynch has done some pooch punting, but in this case, he'll come off the field for Tyler Weedle. Tough to throw and, and move the football in a two minute drill against that stiff wind. Blowing and gusting into his face. And Darion Chance was all the way back to the 10-yard line, moved up five yards knowing the conditions. The last punt for Weedle into the breeze was just 14 yards. Yeah, I'd move him up another five or ten myself. That's why. Well, it's certainly not Weedle's fault. He gave everything he could that time. That's going to die and go the other direction. Northern Illinois just letting it go to the 34-yard line. It has been a difficult evening if you are a kicker. You don't get the play. Then they run you out there when you're not necessarily warmed up, but it doesn't always work out. Yeah, it's tough, and we saw early on the, the missed field goal here with the wind at his back, and then tried to overcompensate a little bit there, and, and now the, the punt, the 14-yarder. Well, this last one was 17. Well, it's a marked improvement. So without any timeouts, the Broncos take over at their own 34-yard line, 42 seconds, and... They've had a field goal miss tonight. Carroll gets protection. That's his man. That's Keith. And into. That's six. Kendrick Roberts, pardon me, the sophomore from Manassas, Virginia. Either way, it goes to the NIU 48 yard line. First down. And Northern Illinois got caught with too many men on the field there. Terrell hands. He throws it to intercepted. Back the other way. Jamal Payton with the interception and into Broncos territory at the 44-yard line. First pick of the season for the freshman from Bellwood, Illinois. And I don't see a flag. 
But I certainly saw too many guys on the field. Defense, five yard penalty, first down, Western Michigan. And the invisible flag was, was thrown. Yeah, I looked too, and uh, you know, possibly the officials' hands are too frozen to even reach it. Actually, they, uh, it's way back yep. there at the 15. So that's the back, the very definition of the back judge, uh, keeping an eye on that kind of thing. That's one of his responsibilities. So wipe out the Peyton interception. And it's a fresh start for the Broncos, first and 10 at the 43-yard line. And that one's on the coaches. I mean, they have to know that you can't make a substitution when they're going fast like that, and they didn't give their kids a chance. Terrell. On the run, fires, has his man, and an opportunity here that'll stop the clock. That's Roberts with another catch. They've got to hurry up and clock it once the ball is marked ready for play or have a play call. Well, the clock does stop at the first down, so they will clock it and then line up and go again. But that's twice now. And we've seen uh, Roberts get open there along the sideline on the right side. And both of them were basically dropped coverages. And if this defense for the Huskies has a weakness, uh, it's at the corner position. Jay Neiman... When he spoke to us, the defensive coordinator confirmed that. He said, you know, our strength is up front and in corners. That's probably our weakness. All right, nine seconds. What's the strategy? I think you have to throw it in the end zone. You should have two shots at it. Or one shot at a field goal? You could do that. You know, you're going to have to get the, either work the sideline or the end zone because there are no timeouts left. Choice is the end zone, and it's incomplete. Good coverage that time by Northern Illinois. Jim Ward trying to get it to Josh Schaefer. Now five seconds to go, and P.J. Fleck will send out the field goal team. Yeah, I don't know that I would be throwing at whoever Jimmy Ward is covering in a situation like that. Obviously, you're going to find the open man and, and, and try to get it to him. But keep an eye on where Jimmy Ward was pre-snap and kind of think maybe somewhere else might be a better idea. So here is the sophomore from Ferndale, Michigan, Andrew Haldeman. He missed one earlier tonight. And he has a good breeze at his back. Blocked! Opportunity here for Western to return it. That's Deshaun Durant trying to pick up some blocks down the field. Can the kicker and Harder get in his way? They do. And that's how the half will end with a blocked field goal by Northern Illinois. Outstanding special teams play, and the kicker woes continue. It has been a brutal night for kickers, and it looked like George Rainey got a hand up, got way in the air for that, and Grant took off. And Quint is standing by with Coach Carey. Coach, how would you best describe the play of uh, Jordan Lynch tonight? Well, I think he's been really good. I mean, <laughs> you know, he's running up and down the field, got some touchdowns. So, I mean, he's doing his part. You know, we got to get some stops on defense. And, and you know, we got that. Those last two drives offensively weren't good enough. What, what's going on with the kicking game? Well, you know, listen, it's hard on everybody in the kicking game. You saw them, too. It's a tough night in the kicking game and the throwing game. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, Quinn and Coach. 229 yards and two rushing touchdowns for Jordan Lynch. Our halftime score to Cobb as NIU in front of Western Michigan 20 to 7. Let's go to Chris Cotter and Trevor Maddich in studio of the College Football Halftime Report. Thank you, Dave. Chris Cotter, Trevor Maddich, and Trevor, as you heard Dave say, 229 yards rushing on 17 carries for Jordan Lynch. He does have a pass, touchdown pass as well. He's been that entire offense here in the first half. He has, and the thing is, he's not really fast enough on the track to get that many yards rushing, you would think, but he gets it all on the football field, and that's one of the impressive things about him when he runs. He doesn't burst out of there like a DeAnthony Thomas, but he gets to 100% of his full speed quickly, and then he shows physical courage. Now, as a quarterback, he could run out of bounds. He could slide. Instead, there's the defender, and he wants to go hit that defender. That's the mentality that this team takes from him. And it's not just as a, a runner when he can initiate contact. As a passer, when he's defenseless in the pocket, he has the courage to stand in there and take that hit as well. Now that's a, an offensive lineman, really a defensive lineman's mentality. But he still has the ability to make the finesse play. This is a pinpoint pass over the back shoulder of his receiver for the touchdown. And that's a nice throw for a guy that's got thick wrists, thick ankles, built more like a lineman than he is a quarterback. And this is what I mean when I say that he gets up to his full speed. He won't outrace a lot of those small defenders in a foot race. The problem is, for those defenders, when he's in full pads, he runs faster than they do, 
when they're in full pads. And that's one of the things that's great about him. He gets 100% out of his capability, and he does it with tremendous courage, and it's one of the reasons that this team plays with the kind of style that he brings. Yeah, thick wrists, uh, thick ankles, and numb wrists and ankles out there in that <laughs> cold weather, but he's getting it done. We already know Northern Illinois is going to play in the MAC championship game. Who are they going to play? And this obviously is going to go a long way to determine whether Northern Illinois is going to the BCS or not. They're going to play the winner of Bowling Green and Buffalo. This game is going to be played on Friday at 1.30 Eastern on the U. Buffalo 5-0 at home this season. They're going to be playing this one uh, at, the, at the Rich Stadium there. At Bowling Green, they've won 7 of 10 meetings all time in this series, so something's got to give two very good teams looking forward to uh, hopefully derailing Northern Illinois if they can have a say in it. All right, coming up, a look at the Iron Bowl. More meaning this year than maybe ever. Ship for life since 1946. trying to remain unbeaten and most importantly trying to maintain that spot in the BCS with Ray Bentley I'm Dave Lamont you know sometimes we hype up somebody and they don't always deliver not a problem with Jordan Lynch no nah, he has actually exceeded the hype if that's possible with the way he ran around in that first half keeping himself warm uh, I guess above all else but a guy that's hard to bring down under normal circumstances and the weather like we have it today it's even that much harder and I mean here he is he just don't go down he kind of refuses the guys try to tackle him and he'll fight it and he'll stay up and then he'll deliver blows and I mean there's a stiff arm that's just knocks a guy right to the ground and to me it's a combination of his strength and his will and, and I love it when a guy just imposes his will not only on an, on an opponent but on the entire game and that's what we saw here in the first half with Jordan Lynch 281 rush yards and Lynch responsible for 229 of those is that and, all yeah it does seem like more so Western Michigan will be kicking off Snow seems to have gone away. The cold temperatures obviously have not. Paris Logan back deep. And the wind still pretty brisk at the back of the kicker, in this case, going from left to right on your screens. And an onside kick to start the half off. And it is retained by Western Michigan. Well, there's that aggression that P.J. Fleck talked about, and they're celebrating over there. P.J.'s uh, jumping on the pile as well, and a great execution there, and the surprise, uh, I think, was a huge part of it. Alex Moulton picked it up. Nice hands here by the wide receiver. That's an outstanding kick right there. He popped it up. Western Michigan legally recovered the onside kick. First down. I mean, that, that's as good as a pass. That, that was that well kicked of a ball, Dave. And when you can do that, that, that's a momentum changer. Now let's see if the offense can grab that thing and make something out of it as Western has the win at their back here in this third quarter. Well, the best hope out of this for Broncos is they keep Jordan Lynch off the field for a little while. Zach Terrell throws, caught, knocked out of bounds. That's going to be a first down. That's Kendrick Roberts who's played a good game tonight for the Broncos. And uh, Quint, did P.J. Fleck tip you off about that onside kick? No, he didn't, but he did tell us creative plays are their explosive plays. Trick plays can be their explosive plays. And you watch this team come out of the locker room after halftime. You never guess they're 1-10. You never guess they're losing by 13 points in, the, in this ball game. Uh, his optimism, his energy, his positive attitude, uh, the, these kids are still playing hard. Yeah, that seems to be the, the mantra around that program. Maybe we've talked a little bit about the road to boat mentality, and maybe you're getting an example of it right here. Pass down the field, almost caught. 
Instead, it's going to be second down and 10, trying to get it to the very talented freshman, Corey Davis, and he was well covered that time. Yeah, Marlon Moore. Marlon Moore, yep. Moore, nice job down there, getting the body position, then able to knock the ball away at the very end because Dor Corey Davis is a dangerous threat down the field. And you see the good hands on him. He kind of worked him a little bit. And then he got his eyes around to find the football. And that's the number one thing that you see, even on Sundays, that guys just for some reason aren't able to do. And Marlon Moore just did it to perfection. Land off to Darion Chance, and he disappears. At the top of the bio, see 91 Anthony Wells after two yards. Perez Ford, number 44, also in there for NIU. The Huskies are playing without one of their best players, Ken Bishop, the defensive tackle. But they're compensating well as Rod Carey for Northern Illinois. His team number 14 in the latest BCS standings. They're trying to make it two years in a row, and they would be, if they make it, the final BCS buster. All right, next year, the 14 playoff. Gets to institute it. About time. All excited about that. Screen pass, middle of the field, caught. And a oh, nice spin, but not going to be enough for the first down. Darian Chance picked up seven. He did eight. And here's another opportunity to be aggressive here for the Broncos. And they do bring out big bodies. No kicker coming on the field here. Watch the umpire right there. I think he got in the way a little bit of the linebacker coming across trying to make the coverage there. Like Peyton, Jamal Peyton. He's done it a little bit. And uh, reports from the field, and we'll ask Quinn about this, but that the uh, it's a little icy down there in certain areas, and you can see it. The remnants of the snow on the field, uh, that's really ice. Javante Ball with the lead block at 55. They don't go underneath into the short run. Instead, another interception, almost anyway, by Jimmy Ward off a deflected pass. He almost had that. So instead, Western Michigan gambles on the pass, but they gamble against Jimmy Ward, and it'll be Huskies football. Yeah, I don't like those odds against Jimmy Ward, that's for sure. And I don't believe there's a tight end around that Jimmy Ward can't cover and just throw a blanket over top of him. And that time he had... Rodriguez and, and there was no chance of that ball getting in there and being complete. Another Mac player that appears to have a very good NFL future. James Spencer, the tailback for the moment. And they go to Spencer. He almost was able to get through a little crack in the defense, but a good tackle after a two-year game by the cornerback, Donald Seliscar. Seliscar has uh, recovered from his uh, little uh, collision there with Jordan Lynch late in that second quarter and comes up and makes another good play, setting the edge for that Bronco defense on this jet sweep. Fake the jet sweep. They go back to Spencer, and he just disappears in the middle of the line. Picked up a couple, maybe to the 31-yard line. Mike Jones, who uh, one time was a Michigan Wolverine, in there on the stop. It'll be third down, and we'll call it pretty much the close to six. This is where uh, Jordan Lynch likes to keep the football if they do go with it on the ground. And why not? And instead, Lynch comes out firing, and it's incomplete. Again, throwing into the wind. He tried to hit it to Turner. Margaro's Turner unable to hang on. That was a tough catch for him to make, so it's fourth down and six. And here comes a problem for Northern Illinois so far. Punting into the wind, Tyler Weedle has hit 14 and 17 yards. And it's become a problem throwing into that wind as well. And the Huskies scored twice going into the wind. But on both those drives, it was Jordan Lynch scrambling rather than throwing the football that moved it down the field. Fake. Yep, they do go to the fake. It is Weedle taken off. He's got a first down, and he slides at the 43-yard line. They got a little tired of the short punts. I'm sure Weedle was sick of it. He was probably pretty pumped to get his number called. And that's just a great decision there by Rod Carey. And obviously, they saw something, and they've got a three-man wall, and really nobody even had to block anybody. Well, and we we'll just split that thing, and there you go. Move the chains. Two special team surprises, and we haven't even played five minutes in this third quarter yet. Yeah, Rod Carey says, okay, you want an onside kick? We'll fake a punt. 
And back and forth they go. Now Cameron Stingley, 42, is into the game. He is off the right hip of Jordan Lynch. That's Brown in motion. And it's Brown who hangs on to it. And he spins out of one, but can't spin out of that tackle. That's going to be a gain out to 46 of three yards. Second and seven. It made by Justin Curry, the Broncos' top tackler. And that time, the Bronco My offense move. was able to, again, set the edge. And what I mean by setting the edge on that outside play is somebody is along the line of scrimmage, and they force the running back or the ball carrier back inside of them. And that's where the rest of the defense is, and that's where the troops can show up and, and rally and make a tackle. Lynch kept the football. Breaking tackles, but not that one. He just he was slowed down enough to where the rest of the troops could come for the Broncos. Mikhail Dubois, a redshirt freshman from nearby Chicago, put him down for the rest of the play. No gain there, third down, and about another six, make it five to go. And Lynch, though, he never ended up on the ground on that one, Dave. He just doesn't like to get on the ground. I don't blame him in this kind of, kind of weather, quite <laughs> frankly, but he's, he'll fight you all the way to the very end. Well, that comes from his background, south side of Chicago, and he played uh, for a great high school program where you had to be tough. You had to run the triple option, and you had to run as a quarterback, and you weren't going to play. And some of that toughness shown right there for Jordan Lynch. He also doesn't like to linger on the ground or have anybody help him up. He gains nine and a first down. Well, he showed some acceleration right there. Well, we talked in our interview, in Quinn's interview with Jordan Lynch about that. Another first down. Lynch will keep it this time. Again, gets a couple of good blocks. Gets inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Here's what Lynch had to say about that toughness that he brings to every football game. You know, one of the things I always said when I was growing up that I would never be, you know, carted off the field or, you know, have anyone try to help me up. You know, as you can see, as when I get tackled, I never let anyone help me up. You know, I always try to pop up as fast as I can and, you know, never take someone's hand to help me up. And by the way, that includes his teammates, right? Nobody helps Jordan Lynch up. And in the moment, he is stacked up a yard short of the first down. It'll be third down and a yard coming up. Yeah, I, I took a different view of that. I never helped anybody else up. <laughs> of course <quite> not. <laughs> <laughs> but I never thought of uh, not, not letting one of my guys help me up. That, that's that's a, a great thought there. Uh, however, I think the execution of it is, is not always true. Now, if one of your own guys, your own color, reaches a hand down to help you up, you're going to let him help you up. Claimed that he doesn't even allow that. Yeah, but he just did on that last play. Well, there so. are exceptions, apparently. <laughs> so here's the handoff of the yard. No, nothing doing. Shut down by the middle of the defense that time. That was Roosevelt Donaldson getting an opportunity, a Richard freshman from the Miami area. Fourth down and a yard to go. It looks like the Huskies are going to go for it. And this field position, absolutely, just a yard to go. Now they're 10 to 25 on fourth down this year. And they'll get it easily. Make that 9, nine Now 10 of 15 on fourth down this season. No problem with Cameron Stingley, the downhill runner, the redshirt junior from Romeoville, Illinois. With Stingley and Spencer, you've got a power back and a speed back that NIU can trade off. In addition, of course, the obvious threat of Lynch, who's got 247 rushing yards tonight. And they don't want to throw the ball going into this win because it's been ineffective. Lynch on the design run. Gets to the middle of the Broncos defense, and they're starting to wrestle him down a little bit better. That was Trevante Bowles, 55, in there who dragged Lynch down and had some help come in there. So a gain of three to the 28. It'll be third, second, rather. Second down at seven. Well, Western Michigan is loading a box. They're playing man-to-man -man on the outside. They know the trouble that Jordan Lynch is having throwing into this win. So they're stacking the box against that run. And that's why they're having a little success. 13th play of a clock-eating drive here following the fake punt. They kept this thing alive. Eight guys right in that box right there. And Lynch reads it. Steps up, wants to go the other way. And you can see they're spying him. Lynch gunning it toward the end zone. He basically just threw that away. It'll be third and seven. Good job that time by the Bronco defense. Yeah, he was trying to actually pull on. He tried to sneak his, his back along the sideline. And then you're going to see the fake come through here in a wheel route along the outside. Keon Adams of the Broncos. Yeah, you see he gets the fake and away he goes. Good discipline there by the Broncos. You see a man picking that up because that's what they wanted. That's what they called and dialed up.
Lynch will keep it. Trying to get to the outside. Western's waiting for him. Lynch breaking tackles. A flag is down and Lynch is down at the 17-yard line. And he got helped up. That was a Houdini move right there. I don't know how he was able to get himself out of there. He had to help his pants up also before he had a Personal problem foul. on national television. Grasping and twisting the face mask. Defense number one. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. How does he get out of this one? You got four Broncos laying around there. And Mike Jones even grabbed his face mask and couldn't get him down. And the only thing that got him down was his pants falling down, I think. <laughs> so Mike Jones hit with a face mask penalty. And that's going to bring the ball as they're still marking. The umpire has it going inside the 10. And they're going to finally stop at the 8-yard line. Jordan Lynch on the last play. First and goal Stingley game. right behind Lynch. And it'll be Stingley. Well, I'll tell you, Western is not backing down in the middle of that defense. That's going to be a yard gain, second down and goal. From the seven, let's go down to the field and Quinn Kesnick. We need a 12th guy is what P.J. Fleck told me. Mm -hmm. He says our Joes are playing with their Joes, but Lynch has been the creator. He's, he's been the best player in college football, uh, and that came from the Western Michigan sideline at halftime. Well, uh, Lynch, this is, again, we talked about this earlier. This is an area where Lynch often keeps the ball and has tremendous success especially in this empty backfield set yep 19 rushing touchdowns this year will he take off no the end zone behind and broke it up that was demetrius petway number two in coverage for the broncos trying to get the pass in to joan breskison so it'll be third and goal from the seven but this is you know well you think oh good third and long no Wow, Lynch's running ability is so good that it doesn't seem to matter. You're right, baby. I mean, he makes play after play after play. And, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't count him out here on this one. Now, Western Michigan is going to play man to man on the five receivers that are outside. They're going to leave six in the box so they have an extra hat in case Jordan Lynch tries to run. Yeah, there he goes. Picking his way through, doesn't make it. It'll be fourth and goal. Now, your kicker is struggling, and he's going to be kicking into a win, but it's a short field goal. Bowles in there on the stop again. And they're going to give Matthew Sims, as, as Quinn pointed out earlier, from six of his last eight, an opportunity. And we showed you a Matthew Sims earlier today. Well, while everybody else was still having Coco in the locker room, Matthew Sims was working on his craft. So this will be a 23-yarder for Sims. And there's only one way to get yourself out of a slump, Dave, and that's work yourself out of it, and that's what Sims is trying to do. As Ben Hogan said, the secret is in the dirt. Now, there's no dirt here, but he nails it. So Matthew Sims, who missed the PAT tonight, gets that back in a couple of more. And Northern Illinois, up 23-7. Good for you, Matthew. Is go out to Michigan, Ohio. Michigan, Ohio. Michigan, Appreciate that, Herb. Freak. Wrongful death and workers' compensation There's the new diesel, the old, the diesel, I should say, as they're retiring diesel and getting a new mascot for the Huskies. They are in charge in this game, 23 to 7. That new one's name is Michi. Thank you. Celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3.3 million in scholarship funds. Well, the kicking game right now, you don't know what we're going to get here. And it's going to be a very high and very short kickoff. Fair catch made at the 29-yard line. It'll be Western Michigan and Zach Terrell. Can he ignite an offense that has struggled all season long to score? You can run ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. And Call of Duty Ghosts. Available now. Rated mature. Now, Diesel on the left is so beloved here that on senior day, Diesel went out after Jordan Lynch, okay? That's how beloved Diesel is as a mascot. Mission is the new Husky mascot. And we were here yesterday for our meetings with the coaches, and it was snowing pretty hard. 
and they were running. I think it was uh, Mission. It was out there getting a little training run in on the field in the snow. They were built for that stuff. Terrell, pressure, runs into it, and he's down. Lose a yard, second down and 11 coming up. Jason Meehan in there, number 49, and a junior from Webster Groves, Missouri. Yeah, he's being chased around the edge by uh, Stephen O'Neill and Meehan kept working up in the middle there and got things forced back into him and makes the play. 29th sack by the Huskies defense this year, first on the night. Taking this play clock down quite a bit. Terrell, pocket collapsing, he takes off. And Terrell, and he shows a little bit of toughness and lost the ball. Was he down? The official says no. You saw the beanbag. That's a fumble and a Northern Illinois recovery by Stephen O'Neill. O'Neill, a fifth-year senior, playing his final uh, home game here. And Ruling in the field is a, a fumble. Ooh, that was a Illinois. hard hit. You can see why he couldn't hang on to the ball. Yeah, Paris Logan just brought the Ball heat on that hit. And O'Neal falls on the football, and you have to wonder about Zach Terrell in his shoulder right now, that right arm. Well, he's meeting with Dr. P.J. Fleck first. Well, you just talked about all the toughness with Lynch and all the I don't go down and I hit people. And this time, Terrell tried the same thing and may have paid a price for it. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, I think uh, one of the ways that Lynch stays healthy is his shoulders are always square at the end of a play. And so he's, he's taking that, that the brunt of the hit with the full force of his body instead of turning sideways. And a little trickeration, the ball is dropped. And Northern Illinois is going to have to eat a big loss. They try to go to Argueros Turner, and it's going to be a loss of 16 yards. It'll be second down and 26. And we'll never know if Turner was going to even step up and try to throw right into the wind. I kind of doubt it now that I think about it, but it's going to be a loss of 16 yards. Not a bad call that area of the field when it's so hard to throw a football, but it doesn't always work out for you. And there's a reason why you maybe not don't want to try those type of things in this type of weather. Lynch handles a low snap. Now they're going to go to conventional straight ahead running play and get. Six yards back with Cameron Stingley. So it'll be third down and 20. And oddly enough, Stingley needs 42 yards to get to the 1,000 for the season. Yeah, he's got 22 thus far on the night. Now up to 29 after that carry. So still a chance for him to give Northern Illinois their first pair of 1,000-yard rushers in school history. Don't forget the school had Garrett Wolf at one time. Straight ahead to James Spencer, conservative call. And it'll be fourth down and about 15. And there will not be a, fee a field goal try into this win. You're going to see the punt team come out. Or will it, you, you run two fake punts here and a half? On a fourth and 15, that, that, that would be uh, right on the edge of... of uh, not a good call, perhaps. Well, the wind, not as drastic as it was. You look at some of the, the Mac flags that are flying off to our left. Weedle's just going to try to get this as close to the goal line as he can. And did a good job. That's a fine punt by Weedle inside the 10-yard line. That's 28 yards. So a long way to go for the Broncos as they try to move in on Northern Illinois. Heat for her. Get close to all the action wherever you are with the new Sports Center app. Blazing fast scores, the hottest news and highlights, analysis, and access to your favorite Sports Center talent 24 7 via Twitter. You can download the new Sports Center app by calling Star Star SC from your phone. And there you see Zach Terrell on the sideline, so he will not be out for this series. It'll be the redshirt senior, Tyler Van Tubergen, who started the year as the number one quarterback, got hurt and isn't 100% at, at the moment. He's very close there, yeah. Sam Dave, and he had a separated shoulder, and that kept him out for three weeks, and then when he came back, Zach Terrell was playing so well that they kind of didn't hurry him back, and now he's getting an opportunity. Against the 14th-ranked team in the BCS, unbeaten Northern Illinois. At home, where 
this senior class doesn't lose, and they rarely do. And there's no game, maybe even a loss of a yard that time. His chance pushed all the way back into the end zone. It'll be second down and 10. Quinn Kesnick tells us that it's a risk that they're looking at of Zach Terrell. He was trying to be aggressive, trying to make a play as a, as a runner, and took a hard shot. That's why they don't make quarterbacks to run for the most part, but there are always exceptions. Third down and 10. Let's take a look back. And I thought the first contact is there. And he did indeed lose in football. That was ruled a fumble. But Northern Illinois could not cash in. And it's that right wrist that they were looking at. I'll say this for the Broncos, for a team that's 1 in 10, their season's over when they get on the bus tonight. They have battled. They have battled against a very good football team, maybe the best team in the MAC. On a difficult night to play with win shares in single digits. And two again, guns it over the middle, and it is almost intercepted at the 23-yard line. And who else but Jimmy Ward? And Jimmy Ward, he's going to hate on himself for not making that play. Well, he was right in perfect position. I don't know if this got tipped or not. No, it just it got through there, but Ward had jumped the route and stepped in front of the intended receiver. And boy, you can see him doing some, some deep contemplation right there about that drop. Haven't been many in his career. Six interceptions on the year for Ward. He had 10 tackles in that highlight interception last week in the victory over the Rockets. Line drive. That's a tricky one. He gets a lot of roll. Schroeder does. And it's going to finally drop it around the 35 yard line. Well, we love rivalries this time of the year. We've got a great one right here. It's the Egg Bowl. It's on ESPN Thanksgiving night. Bo Wallace and the Rebels roll into Starkville looking to take the golden egg. Well, Dan Mullins upset minded Bulldogs. They got to win a game to be bowl eligible. ESPN's college football primetime served by Applebee's part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro. Ole Miss versus Mississippi State will be an egg haven in Starkville. Thursday at 7.30 on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. 57-yard puck for Jay Schroeder. Holding, kicking team number 37. 10-yard penalty be added to the end of the kick. First down. So we take a look at this matchup in Starkville. Of course, tradition all over this series. A lot of these players have been recruited by both schools, so there's always that angle. The 15th longest series are tied for it in the history of college football. And it's the 86th battle, not just a typical egg, mind you, but a golden egg. And that part of it began back in 1927. 110 times. And then that's something. Uh, that's, that's amazing. That's leather helmets and... Uh, that goes back quite a way, and it's interesting, you know, for Ole Miss, there was a lot of talk about them being a, a big splash in the SEC because of the remarkable recruiting class they've had. Coming off a big bowl game win in Birmingham, and the future seems to be very good under Hugh Freeze in Oxford. Yeah, you know, those great recruiting classes, uh, they don't usually manifest for a few years. Well, they're going to re-kick. He talked about adding 10 yards, and then they... And ruled in Northern Illinois to say, you know what? We want to put Jay Schroeder almost in our new facility off to behind it. Schroeder, another low kick. Definitely better field position. Fielded by Matt Williams. And instead of their own 35-yard line where the kick was down, they're going to be at the Western Michigan 37-yard line with a minute 45 to go in this third quarter. Great call there by... Coach Carey to let him take the 10 yards at the end, make him do it again. And it's a nervous thing kicking out of the back of your own end zone. I mean, very seldom do you get a, a great punt. Especially with that rugby style, if you can catch the bounce, which Williams did, you, know, you can mitigate that roll and, and really change and flip the field position, and that's what they did. Rod Carey completing his first season as the head coach here. Today, Dorian left for NC State during the bowl season. Stutter step, Lynch, unbelievable run, how he got through a small gap. Lynch fighting for the last yard, and he's in the end zone for a third time tonight. Didn't you know he was going to go all the way? 
And there's a perfect example of the patience that Lynch has when he runs the football. Because you watch him early on in this run, and he's not in a hurry to go anywhere. He's waiting for it to develop. He's kind of just looking around, tapping around, and he finds his way through there. And then you're not going to get him down. That's twice tonight where Ryan Zamora should have had him. And Lynch is having none of it. Just knocks him away. And there he is, 300 yards now on the night in 25 carries. And that, that's the thing. He was reaching back and hitting Zamora yeah, behind him. Like, get, you're not going to do this. What is really cool, if we show up the low angle again, is you don't see Lynch right away. Yeah, you can't see. There's the patience I'm talking about. There he is. You know, the change of direction, and now he wins his way through that line. And here he is. You talked about it. Just He wasn't going to let Zamora tackle him. And he said, I've already uh, seen this once, and I got you away with a stiff arm the first time. Now I'm going to beat on you with a couple of forearm shivers behind the back, no less. 12 rushing touchdowns over the last four games now. Well, this isn't the first time uh, that he's gone for 300 yards this season, Jordan Lynch, against Central Michigan. He also tore off 300 plus yards. And it is 316, the NCAA record for a quarterback. And I'm going to tell you, I think he's on his way to breaking that one tonight. Minute 36 left to go here in the third. And there's, there's still some yards out there for Jordan Lynch. Can he get 400? All right, let me ask you. You are the perfect person to ask. You've played in this league. You've succeeded in this league. Where does Jordan Lynch rank among the greatest Mac players of all time? And present company excluded? Well, we know where you Obviously, rank, of course. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I don't even... I rank myself, anyway. <laughs> you know, he's right up there. Well, uh, this kick is mishandled, but Western Michigan's just going to have to fall out of the 20-yard line, Darian Chance alertly realizing that they were about to give the football back up. And there's been some great ones. You know, Ben Roethlisberger well, was down. dominant when he was in this league. Uh, I think Byron Leftwich. Uh, was unbelievable. You had uh, Chad Pennington. You know, and I'm mentioning all quarterbacks here, obviously, but uh, Dan Lefevre had a heck of a run there at Central Michigan. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, because I'm a defensive guy, I'm gonna say Jack Lambert, who played at Kent State oh, back yes. in the day. I'm gonna give it to Jack Lambert on defense. And I'll tell you what, because we're here tonight, and Jordan Lynch is just going off incredibly. Uh, I'll say Jordan Lynch in terms of the best offensive player ever in the Mid-American Conference. And by the way, Leftwich and Pennington played back in the days when Marshall was a member of the Mid-American Conference. Buck and a half left in the quarter. And two are going remaining in their quarterback, and he'll just throw this one away. So... We've talked quite a bit about Jordan Lynch and his ability to, to whether he'll be invited on ability, whether he'll be invited to New York City. So that leads us to our Maction trivia question. What was the highest finish for a Mac player in the Heisman Trophy voting? Hmm. I actually know the answer. I do too. So we'll because see because you uh, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna make your way home, make your way around to the fourth quarter, and that's gonna reveal the answer. Not that long away. It is not Ray Bentley for those of you trying to Google it. Brian Fields picks up about five there, so Boomer May is in there on the stop. It'll be third down at five. The next game for Northern Illinois will be the MAC championship game from Ford Field. That'll be on a Friday night. And they'll take on either Buffalo or Bowling Green. Those two play Friday afternoon at Ralph Wilson Stadium in Buffalo for the right to represent the East in the MAC title game. And that will be a whale of a ball game. Uh, I hope Western New York comes out and supports the Bulls in this, in this contest because uh, it's a great football area, but it's a more of a Bills football area. I'd love to see the Bulls get some of their due as they've had a great year under the old corner head coach Mr. Quinn. We have a timeout taken by the Broncos with 35 seconds remaining. And Jeff Quinn in his third year uh, in, in, uh, with the Buffalo Bulls and doing a great job there. Well, here's what the deal. Bowling Green, best defense in the MAC, possibly. Buffalo's got a good one, too. And they're looking for their first nine-win season. You've got to go back to when they weren't in the MAC. They weren't even Division II. They were a Division III school. And that's on ESPNU Friday at 1.30. I'll get a chance to watch a little of that before I get to work on Friday. But I'm looking forward to seeing what happens and very much excited about the MAC championship game. Right. We've got Khalil Mack, the... 
defending, I guess, defensive player of the year in the Mid-American Conference. And then, of course, the Bowling Green defense, you saw their top rank, good defensive battle. That both those teams can play some offense, too. This is going to be a, a nice football game. And then the winner will be sitting around for a week watching film with Jordan Lynch. Third down and five for Western Michigan. Well, the commissioner of the MAC, John Steinbrecher, is on hand, and we'll be hearing from John. He'll be talking on the field with Quint. And we're in trouble. Football came out and bounced right back into his hand. Jamal Payton, number 33, who had an interception earlier taken away by a penalty, was in there on the sack. It's a loss of 10 and fourth and very long. Yeah, overload blitz there from the back side, and you see that uh, Fields picks up the outside guy rather than the inside guy. That's a mistake. You want to block the one that can get to the quarterback quickest and give him a chance to get rid of the football. And he chose to block the outside rusher. And Peyton takes advantage of it. And Norman calls a timeout. You know, at the end of the quarter. Now let's see which is. Yep. Timeout, Northern Illinois. Their first 30 seconds. That was Anthony Wells who got an earful from Rod Carey. And I just wonder if he had to call the timeout to avoid a penalty for too many men on the field, which has happened already to Northern Illinois tonight. And Rod Carey just reminding them that these are the little things that good teams don't do is make counting mistakes like that. So let's show you where Northern Illinois, they made really some of the biggest news of the week when they jumped in the BCS from 16 to 14. Fresno dropped from 15 to 16. By the way, that's an excellent Fresno team, obviously. They've got San Jose State and I guess Utah State most likely in their conference championship game. The other issue that keeps Northern Illinois and Fresno State ticking is look where number 19 to 20 are. They are the top teams in the American Conference, the American Athletic Conference. And if UCF can't get past Northern, can't get into the top 16 and Northern Illinois remains or Fresno State somehow gets around them, that's when you get a BCS buster. It just so happens to be on this punt return by Matt Williams. We'll tell you that there's a representative from the Fiesta Bowl who happens to be here tonight. That might be the location for Northern Illinois should everything fall in place for the Huskies if they're able to make a second consecutive BCS Bowl game. Jordan Lynch tonight has rushed for 300 yards. Big Ten ACC Challenge begins next Tuesday. Your body after. We are. Let's start the fourth quarter. ESPN. Go. Villa the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. We're about to start the fourth quarter. Jordan Lynch has rushed for 300 yards tonight, right on the number. That's what Western Michigan has for total yards. 200? So Lynch has a football field's difference between his own performance on the ground alone and what Western Michigan has done entirely as a team on offense. Cameron Stingley in the game at the tailback position. I'm surprised Lynch is still in there. Well, he could, would get, take him out, could get the all-time record here. Let's not forget. He may be able to do it one run. And Jordan Lynch is putting his shoulder in. He's just shy of his own record for most yards by a quarterback in a game. Uh, if they mark him at the 24, then he's tied it. That's 16. But this is what I noticed about Lynch last week and before. Watch at the end of the run. You know, he want me? He'll punish you. Yeah. I love that. It's a 15 yard game, so he's got to get two to set the all time record for a college quarterback owned by Jordan Lynch. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is his last drive here tonight. Handles it. There's the record. Jordan Lynch takes a couple of hits, but again, and oh, he's taking hands tonight. I don't blame him. He might be just a little bit tired, and he looks a little sore there. I can't blame him. Petway and Bowles. He got it here and flipped it. It'll be second down and about four. Yeah, we saw a grimace on his face there. That one, that one didn't feel so good. And there's a record that's more important than that rushing record, and that's 13 and 0, which is what they can go to after the MAC championship game. And then, you know, without him on this team, I 
don't know that they're as dominant. They're still a very good football team across the board. But they're, they're not undefeated, in my opinion. Well, Lynch has done the record. 321 yards tonight. Just on the ground alone. Third down and less than a yard to go. Handles the snap. Gives it to Stingley. Stingley lowers his shoulder. And stiff resistance by the Broncos' defense. Now, did he get to the mark is the issue, of course. And that was uh, Trevor Ishmael, number 27, who just did not give an inch to Stingley. And he didn't get it. So it's going to be fourth down. And do you give uh, Matthew Sims another shot here? Here's your answer. Yes, he does. That, that slump. And you give oh, Jordan Lynch a warm parka and a cup of soup. Yeah, and, and be done. He does look a little, little beat up, a little tired. And Jordan Lynch, by the way, is not a Cam Newton body. All right, he's six feet ish and a 220, solidly built, but yes. not the biggest guy in college football. He's not in there. All right. You know, I hate. I was a little disappointed that a few fans booed him when they came on the field. But Matthew Sims silences his doubts and his critics. And Jordan Lynch, it may be all for him tonight. Zero heartburn. Buffalo deep ball down the middle, and he is in for a touchdown. Touchdown, Boo Boo Gates. Oh, good cutback by Lynch, and he's free. It'll be a touchdown, Jordan Lynch. A uh, hardy night. If you're a fan here, you are a fan because it's two degrees wind chill out there in Northern Illinois. The top team in the MAC West may be the top team in the conference. They'll get a chance to prove that with the MAC Championship game at Ford Field. They're in command of this game. Now, 33 to 7. Quint Kestnick is on the field with a very special guest, Mac Commissioner John Steinbrecher. John? John, what, what's, a, what's a player like Jordan Lynch mean, mean to the conference? Well, he's, uh, I don't know how you put a value on it. He's such a phenomenal athlete, he's such a phenomenal student, he's a good, good person. He's such a difference maker. I mean, he, he lived uh, what is already a very, very, very good Northern Illinois team. Makes him even better. Cold night, tough conditions. Midweek November football, as we're seeing a big time return here by Western Michigan. Uh, what reaction have you gotten from the schools, from uh, the players, and from the, the communities for having the, the, the midweek games? Well, you get a lot of everything. First off, it's a chance to really shine the spotlight, spotlight on our institutions and our student athletes. But there's some trade offs. It makes it challenging for our fans to get out to the games and the students to get out to games and things like that. So you try to balance it. Northern did an exceptional job tonight. You know, we had a really good crowd early on. Uh, but I. By and large, we've been pleased with it because it gives us an opportunity to be playing when no one else is playing. And uh, again, it's none of those things you don't put a, a value on. Going forward with the college football playoff system, how, how would that impact Max schools? Well, I, it's gonna be a chance for that committee to see our folks. You know, you think about next year, if we had the same situation next year where they're talking about Northern Illinois and Fresno, you're gonna have a committee deciding that. And they'll have a list of, of data in front of them, things like that, but they're gonna have some great opportunities to see Mid-American Conference teams. Thanks, John. Dave? All right, thank you, Quinn, and uh, thank you, Commissioner. We certainly have enjoyed our tour of the MAC in uh, the month of November, and it's still not finished yet with MAC coverage. And by the way, if you're looking for the bowl season, you're going to see six, maybe even seven uh, MAC teams bowl eligible and uh, spots to be filled. Yeah, last year, a record seven MAC teams made it into bowl games, and uh, I believe that they'll, they'll get six and then possibly seven. Central Michigan is on the bubble there. They're at five and six. They have to win their finale against Eastern Michigan to get to the magic number of six in order to have an opportunity. And, you know, there's a chance that may happen. And while the MAC only has three tie-ins, direct tie-ins, will they get an automatic berth this year? Uh, with other conferences unable to fulfill, you're going to get chances for Toledo, chance for Ohio to get bowl opportunities. Of course, Northern Illinois may end up in the BCS again. But next year, the MAC will get, I think, three additional games, or any games, that will give the MAC extra tie-ins. And this league deserves that.
Right, there, there's going to be a game in uh, Mobile, Smith Alabama, one in Boca Raton, and another one in the Bahamas. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, willing to go to any one of those. You have, my, you have my number. Do you have your passport? Yes, I do. All right. So the run by Antoine Scriven getting an opportunity to play now. First down and 10 for the Broncos. Scriven running hard. Carries attacker down for eight yards at the 32-yard line. Second down and two. All right. If back in the third quarter, we asked you in the Heisman Trophy voting, which Mac player finished the highest? And we've had Chad Pennington as the answer. 1999. Again, Marshall was a Mac school back then, but also when Byron left, which was around. And Jordan Lynch, just if he does get the invitation to New York, and we're starting to think, based on Joe Tessitore's Heismanology, and, uh, of course, the guys have their balance now. The voters have just gotten their balance. And listening to Rod Gilmore on college football talk during the week, he's, Rod thinks that the, this is the year that the ballots are going to be held in the last second before they're turned in. And, and I, I believe Jordan Lynch will, will be able to make that trip and, and be in that top four or five. Uh, probably four is what they're talking about now. Yeah, it looks that way. So highest finishes ever for Mac players. You saw Pennington with fifth. There were some other top ten. Jordan Lynch last year was seven. Nate Davis, what a terrific quarterback he was for the Cardinals of Ball State. And Roethlisberger was ninth, left which the year before that sixth. And Pennington uh, for the Thundering Herd back in the five spot in 1999. And Lynch would beat that record. It was like he beat his own record for most rushing yards by a quarterback in the game if he gets the invitation to New York. And we're dropping a lowering of the hopes for Johnny Manziel and Marcus Mariota. It certainly increased the chances for both Andre Williams and for Jordan Lynch. Short pass. <laughs> this Rodriguez. Rodriguez. <laughs> He's a load now. Well, I admire that. Again, their season's over in nine minutes and ten seconds on the game clock, and Rodriguez is playing like it's the first game in September. Tackled by Santa Cantarina and Moore. And, you know, I, P.J. Fleck, if there's any compliment you can give him, it's, it's the way this team is playing. I mean, that's the biggest compliment right there. They, they continue to fight despite the adversity, despite the, the poor record of one in ten, and uh, all, all those things. Now, they've had to come up, overcome injuries this year. They've had 15 starters out of the course of the season. And, you know, their second, you know, you know there's two quarterbacks throughout. And, and a lot of things have happened against them. But they keep fighting. And you got to respect that. And, and that goes right to P.J. Fleck and his enthusiasm and attitude and what he brings to this program. Scriven gains a couple. And it makes you think that, and, and the word is that they're getting an excellent recruiting class together. And, of course, as you said, I agree completely. It, that takes a couple of years to gestate and see if it's going to work. But uh, the fact that Western Michigan is starting to be mentioned by some of the recruiters is, is having a good time, a good year, and getting players ready for that national signing day in February. We'll see. And that's the strength in the background uh, of P.J. Flack. You know, you look at this senior class here at Northern. He was a recruiting coordinator here when they were recruiting this group. So uh, that kind of shows you something right there. Driven again. Nothing. I don't think you got it, Dave. No, we didn't. Uh, based on the official of the far side of the field, no gain on the play. Fourth and a yard to go. I think you got to go for yeah, it. Yeah, you got nothing to lose at this point. If a field goal isn't really going to do a whole lot for your morale or anything like that, you know what? Try and punch it in. I want to see that overload that they ran and scored their only touchdown with in the ball game. That unbalanced line to the right. And see if they can get something done with that. We'll see if Trevante Bowles stuck. Actually, he can't sneak on it. No. Uh, if he was there, uh, we're going to let this wind down and take a timeout, I believe. When they have two of them left, that yeah, P.J. Fleck has already indicated the official. Yeah, and then, then maybe that will allow them to, to get that group together uh, that scored the touchdown, and that's what I'd do. So, 7.04 to go. Let's we'll find what's on P.J. Flex of mine when we return to DeKalb with Northern Illinois, looking like they're going to finish the regular season undefeated. So Ally Bank has a raise your rate CD that and I must go. ESPN College Football Primetime brought to you by the ultra intuitive M series smart TV from Vizio. It's beautifully simple. 
And Ally Bank, your money needs an ally. And the Ohio State Buckeyes National Championship hopes continue Saturday on ABC. Braxton Miller leads third-ranked Ohio State into the big house for the nation's best win streak in the Big Ten title game looming while Devin Gardner and the Wolverine trying to make a major statement by knocking off their arch rivals. College football presented by Cave Jewelers, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro. Ohio State versus Michigan, Saturday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on ABC. Let's look for Big 55 out there. See if he made it. Javante Bowles. And another timeout being called. Yeah, I, I think uh, Bowles is out on the field, and Northern Illinois had to manage that personnel. Hey, let's send it off to our personnel. Chris Cotter and Trevor Maddich in the studio. Thank you, Dave. We've got a big night of college basketball across our networks. First of all, over on ESPN right now, Baylor and Dayton, Jordan Seibert. Is a name you need to keep an eye on there for the Flyers. You know, that's the semifinal of the Maui Invitational. Winner will play Syracuse for the title. Over on ESPNU, Pitt and Stanford championship game of the Legends Classic. And then coming up here on the Deuce, immediately following our game, the finals of the CB Hall of Fame Classic. That's Tyler Hawes, BYU, and Final Four team from last year, the Wichita State Shockers. They'll tip at about 10-20. Back to Dave and Ray. All right, thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. Great time of the year for the college sports fan. Football and basketball on our family of networks. Fourth and a yard to go. The power package is out there. Ray and I are also kind of rooting for Javante Bowles to get a chance to carry the rock. Pitched out. That works again. And down to the two goes Antoine Scriven, the redshirt senior from Inverness, Florida, on the west coast of the state. And that's going to be first and goal for the Broncos. Inside seven minutes remaining in their season. And I keep that same personnel in there, and I guarantee you Western has more than that little toss play that we've seen uh, twice successfully now out of that set. And maybe a little bootleg back to the other side. We also mentioned that uh, the big kid, Bowles, uh, they have a play where they call his number. So we'll see if they, uh, they go back to something different. Here they are, the balance set. And left side jump over early. That should go against the Broncos. And it will. Ball start. Offense number 85. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's Mario Rodriguez who was hit with that. So now back him up. First down and goal from the seven-yard line. And now I don't know that I keep the big personnel in there. But they will. After the penalty, Broncos at first and goal from the seven. That's the kind of thing that P.J. Fleck has had to endure. His team still making some mistakes they've made early in the year. They have improved. Maybe a game of a couple of that time. In the beginning of the second game of the season, they, they lost to uh, Nichols State in their first game at home at Waldo that Stadium. That was a tough loss for the program because you know, hopes were high, new coach, new attitude, all the row the boat, and the stuff that was being uh, promoted and uh, they fell flat at home and it was a tough one for P.J. Fleck and his staff mm -hmm. he, and, sorry Dan I'm gonna say he what he told us and I, I think we can agree is he has seen market improvement in his team from there and they've been close I mean you can make a case for them to be four and seven this year now that's not a, particularly where you want to be but it, it beats the you know what out of where they're at one and ten Ben Tubergen toward the end zone drop well, that's a surprise because Corey Davis led all freshmen in FBS. Holding defense number 21, half the distance of goal, automatic first down. First set of downs for Tyler Van Tubergen, the redshirt senior from Holland, Michigan, wrapping up his college career tonight. And Davis forced that, that penalty there, and that's why uh, Van Tubergen took so long to make the throw because Corey Davis couldn't get out of that out of the grasp. Yeah, the Davis, more. Ray Davis leads FBS freshman in six different receiving categories this season. Power straight ahead and short 
about a yard short. Northern yeah. Illinois hasn't given up a fourth quarter point in their last three games. This is where I think you have to give it to 55 Bulls. You know, you're a yard out, and he's a senior, and you have the play. And you know what? I, I just, I'd be surprised if, if P.J. Fleck didn't do that. Well, this drive has been over eight minutes long, and this is the 12th play coming up. P.J. Bowles is looking over the sidelines. Am I going to get something here? Nope. Did they get the touchdown? Yes, yes they did. Western he'll get Michigan. credit for a good block is what he'll get. One and Western Michigan gets one more on the board. Antoine Scriven. Antoine Scriven. Got a very nice drive there. Scriven, his first touchdown of the season. You see Bowles coming in, leading the way, and he, he actually knocked one of his own guys <laughs> clear out of the way. That friendly fire is dangerous right there. And, Boy, he, he, he said somebody a wind up. Well, he got in the end zone. We'll say that. But he, he's not differentiating no. between colors here. Nor should he. <laughs> he was clear a path, baby. Get a little bit of a look at that beautiful indoor practice facility they used just for several sports by Northern Illinois, and they're comfortably in front with 440 to go. College football on ABC. Ohio State, Michigan, Saturday at noon. Honestly, I'm not looking for five-star treatment. I get times are tight, but it's hard to get any work done like this. Then came this baby. Small, but with Windows and Office. It runs my work stuff, and I can use apps like Flipboard for news or Xbox Video to watch the shows I'm never home to see. And I can still get work done at the same time. Excuse me, do you mind if I... We have four hours to find your dad a gift, and he's got to have the best, so we need to stay focused. James, you're my rock. Can you keep it together? There's and free shipping site-wide. All in one night, BCS eligibility and city supremacy at stake. Saturday night on ESPN and ABC. At 7.45 Eastern on ESPN, James Franklin and the fifth-ranked Tigers can clinch the SEC East with a win against Heisman candidate Johnny Manziel and the number 21 Aggies. And at 8 on ABC, Crosstown rivals battle for the victory bell. Brent Hundley and the 22nd-ranked Bruins battle Marquise Lee and the 23rd-ranked Trojans, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro. The fun begins Saturday night with Texas A&M, Missouri at 7.45 on ESPN, UCLA, USC at 8 on ABC. So Missouri... Wraps up the East. What a win. What a season when they thought they lost James Franklin for the season. He's been able to come back. South Carolina, though, wins the East and Missouri loses. The winner of the Iron Bowl clinches the West, and if Auburn wins, they'll have the tiebreaker should they pull off a mild, if it's even an upset, against Alabama. All right, that'd be an upset. There's the short kick. Again, the win is, oh, that was mishandled. That's a loose ball recovered by Northern Illinois at the 19-yard line. So we think Jordan Lynch's evening is finished. Or is it? Is he going back out for more? And the rest of his team and the Cougars as well over on ESPN News are going to tip off in about... 40 seconds and they'll move over to the deuce as soon as we come to the conclusion of our game at Husky Stadium. That's where we find Dave Lamont, Ray Bentley, and Quinn Kessler, guys. All right, thank you. Looking forward to that matchup. That'll be a lot of fun. We speculated that Jordan Lynch wasn't going to play anymore, but I almost wonder if he just went to the coach and said, look, I'm not playing in the stadium again. Let me finish. Yeah, that would be the only way. I just can't imagine why he's out there, quite honestly. Um, I certainly wouldn't let him run the football. And Jordan Lynch has 321 yards rushing and three touchdowns on the ground tonight. He'll hand it off. Cameron Stingley trying to get to that 42 yard mark to get over a thousand. And Quint Kesnick is standing by with Jordan's parents, Jim and Sheila. Quint? Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, senior night, Jordan's last home game. What, what emotions are you dealing with tonight? Uh, you know what? Not until I stepped out onto the field. It, it kind of hit me a little bit. We had a fun five years here, and uh, watching them play in Northern play was overwhelming. They, they're fantastic. 
one thing that stands out watching Jordan, his competitive spirit. When did you first notice that he had this competitive nature? Probably when he was in kindergarten. Yeah, when he started playing football in about kindergarten, about five, six years old. Sheila, we asked him about his toughness. He, he says his toughness comes from you. Why is that the case? I have no idea. I mean, you just try to be good parents, you know? Discipline them the right way. What are you most proud of? He's got all these great accomplishments. What are you most proud of? Uh, that he stayed as humble as he is. You know, he, he goes out there, he plays the game hard. Uh, it's a good football team, and it just, he just stayed humble. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, enjoy the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Quinn. Thank you, Jim and Sheila. And Humble's a great word. We've talked to him a couple of times, and he is not a me, me, me guy. And he's also out of the game. Uh, while you heard the interview, you might have heard the crowd noise going on. Uh, that was a salute from the fans that are still here in the two-degree wind chill in DeKalb. And it's a redshirt sophomore, Matt McIntosh. And now it looks like Cameron Stingley is over the 1,000-yard mark. So for the first time in Huskies history, they have two 1,000-yard rushers in the same season. Right, Stingley at 44. He needed 42 on the night to eclipse that 1,000-yard mark. And all he has to do is not lose any at this point. Well, and this brings up a discussion that Rod Carey is going to have to worry about in the offseason. Who's his next quarterback going to be? And one of the two candidates is Matt McIntosh, who's number nine. And the other is a redshirt freshman, Drew Hare. And we spoke to Coach about it. And he said, you know, it's it's really a, a close battle between those two guys. He said McIntosh is probably the, the better runner here, the better thrower at this point in their development, but it's close in both of those categories. So they're going to battle it out in the spring, and, and, they, and they have some big shoes to fill, that's for sure. Yeah, that's a wide-open job in the spring. It's a Huskies first down. Under two minutes. Northern Illinois, 8-0 in conference play this year, counting tonight. 12-0. Be curious to see what happens to their BCS ranking. Fresno State playing San Jose State this weekend. 25 MAC wins in a row. They've won four straight MAC West championships. This will be their 26th straight at home and 20 MAC wins in a row at home for the Huskies. Of course, not only will they have a new quarterback next year, they'll have a new mascot starting. Mission taking over for the legendary Husky. And we, we spoke to Bob Cole, the offensive coordinator. He says, hey, we're, we're losing only four seniors on offense. And so they expect to, to be able to reload and, and continue to play well next year. Well, their top two receivers coming back, Deron Brown and Tommy Lee Lewis. Brown played a little bit tonight. Lewis did not play, but... They expect he'll be ready for the game in Detroit against either Buffalo or Bowling Green. Well, Stingley is a redshirt junior. Spencer is a redshirt junior. They are losing a, a great left guard, Jared Bolt. And Matt Kremple, the, the right tackle. I don't know if you've mentioned him, but... I think a few of the fans that are, that are here that stuck it out through the night are yelling BCS now in the final seconds of this game. And there you go, some history for this NIU program that seems to make history almost every week. Jordan Lynch is going to go over 2,000 yards on, on the season. Delay, and the delay, back with two games left. Five yard Third down. MAC championship game and then a bowl game of some kind. Whether it will be a BCS game or not. Certainly we want to thank the sports information staffs of both these schools for all of their help during the week. Our crew for hanging in tonight, especially those guys and women and outside. We've appreciated it, believe me. How about the people in that warm truck down there? They get a little love coming to it. A little, a little bit. 463 total yards for the still unbeaten. Oh, they came from Gary and Cole. Gatorade bath. 
<laughs> Warm handshake with P.J. Fleck. 12 straight wins for NIU. 25 straight of the MAC. 26 consecutive at home. And now the MAC championship at either Buffalo or Bowling Green awaits. That's it from the Cal Illinois. Your final score: 33-14, Northern Illinois over Western Michigan. We thank you for watching Tuesday night action. Now let's take you, as promised, to Kansas City for the CBE Hall of Fame Classic. David Ray, thanks very much. Welcome to the Sprint Center in Kansas City, the CBE Hall of Fame Classic Championship game. Wichita State and BYU, an early two-point lead for the Cougars. Matt Carlino's had a couple of threes so far in this game for BYU. This is Eric Mika, the freshman with the right hand in the lane. We want to be aggressive in the paint.